Hello and welcome everyone. It is the 6th of July 2021 and it is time for the High Roller Super Millions Week 3 Season 2 Nanonoko. I think on paper one of the absolute coolest and most fun lineups we've ever had. No guarantee it's gonna be awesome but I feel like today weird stuff has to happen for today not to be a truly awesome show. Yeah, it's a stacked final table. Um, like when we say stacked, I mean we mean stacked. All of the, all of the big names up top uh, and at the bottom too, right? And you know, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, good bets out there. I, mean, I woke up just just now and I saw Elky tweeting like, you know, I'm betting on Adrian Mateos. Pretty sure that guy's at the bottom, but he's getting final table betting in. So I'm curious to see what your bets are, Roddy. Yes, I saw Elky went to bed with a dinner with you. I was like, hey, sick fish, why not with me? I have the feeling that there's no way Elky is as experienced in picking final table winners like we are at this point. Uh, let's not waste any time. Obviously, as always, this is our pre-pre-show. You guys have nine minutes to place a couple of final table bets as well. But I think tonight, honestly, you probably have a blast, even without that extra sweat, because I really can't wait to see who's going to win it. And let's just go ahead and take a look at the nine players that have made it to the final table. And you guys still have nine minutes to get those final bets in. I mean, where do we start? Let's just start off with my bets then. And then okay, you're like, yeah. Roddy, did you play some bets? I did play some bets. I didn't go super crazy. I went like a little bit crazy, but really not that crazy. I put a hundred bucks on Ben just because I think Ben is awesome. And just like you said in your little Twitter promo video, if you can win a tournament with King Six, then you can pretty much win all of them. He's a previous champ. And so I was like a hundred bucks, 4.6. And one thing you know with Ben though, is that he doesn't have random weird, uh, silly blow ups that are unnecessary, right? If he's in the league, yeah, he will do the, the, the chip leading thing, but he will do it in a controlled manner. He doesn't get too carried away. Ben is not that guy that has an orbit. is like, this is my hand. I want to win it. And then loses all his ships. I feel like with Ben, you know that you're always getting a pretty decent bet in. Then I also put 50 bucks on Limitless and Isaac Hexton, just cause Isaac, in my opinion, like one of the proper OGs when I was a young boy, I already watched him play on all the big shows back then. And you know that I'm a bit of a fanboy of Limitless and Limitless does have the play style to potentially win it all. I feel like no matter what kind of chip stack he has. Uh, so yeah, I went for those three. You say 50 bucks on each guy, is that right? A hundred on Ben and 50 bucks on okay. Limitless and 50 bucks on Isaac Hexton. But it's still good. That's still some solid betting out there. Um, I guess uh, today is just like, yeah, I mean, I can see those being Roddy bets because those are like your three like really top tier guys that you love a lot, right? Because I think let's just say those three guys weren't at the final table. I'm guessing you kind of like Daniel Divorce a little bit too, right? Because he's kind of got a good play style where he kind of goes for it. Uh, a pretty big name in the middle. I know you like those odds here and there, but today you're just going for the top. You're just skipping the chip leader like that. Like That makes me want to pick the chip leader maybe later today just because... Well, it's a anti Roddy bet. He's got all the chips, um, but you know he's an unknown player, a little bit. Uh, I was, you know, you didn't do your final table railing, did you this time, or the final two? Tables? No, I, I, I was, uh, I was busy getting drunk in Stockholm, mate. It was Sunday night, and uh, you know the tournament was over, or at least my soccer tournament was over. So we got a bunch of people together. We went into town. Got a couple drinks, maybe a few too many. The Monday morning wasn't pleasant, but no, I was definitely not capable. I didn't have a good streaming setup. I don't really like doing set, uh, streams from like crappy setups. And that internet last week was not what I expected it to be from Swedish internet. So no, there was no rating, but I did go over the lobby and I saw a couple of the guys that we have seen be very successful last year. Fire multiple bullets in Anoko and not being able to go all the way this week. Yeah, I mean, that happens, right? Um, you know, it's the funny thing. I was. I was watching um, the final two tables actually myself a little bit because uh, Ben CB he was streaming it himself. I was like, all right, you know, I'm around. Let me just watch it, and I saw him cruise up to the top two. So I've got some extra insight on how these got how these things went down. It was quite solid, but you know that Chinese guy down there he picked up aces at the right time. So you know that's why he's in the middle of the pack. Uh, but he was just hanging in there during the bubble and stuff like that. Um, I think Adrian Matios actually got screwed over a little bit. I believe he got in Kings against High Texans Ace Queen, so that's why Isaac is there. He could, he should have been mm -hmm. out of the tournament if he didn't hit that ace. Uh, but man, Fiesta Pagana, you know what he did? On NCB was saying everyone's going to be tight. They're going to fall down to like one big blind guy. One of the, I think it was Marius Garrett. They jammed like 25 bigs, which is a lot at that time. 
And then like he snap called it off for like 25 bigs or something with, with Ace King. He did not care on a literal bubble. There's guys of like two big, like multiple guys with two, three big blinds. Snap called it. He held. That's why Fiesta Pagana's on the top right now. So I like that uh, insight because, you know, there's some guys out there. We know they're going to fold Ace King on the bubble because it's a big bubble out there. So it's going to be a good lineup, Roddy. Um, I'm just trying to figure out who am I going to pick for our little side bet today. I believe there's some uh, other little promo, Pocket 4s, Pocket 5s. Did you read about that? I did. And then somebody said, like, yeah, but they're never going to play it. I was like, no, 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 they will play it. It truly depends on who gets them. Yes, it's true that our Pocket 4s have been folded quite often. But first of all, last time Ben folded Pocket 4s, he would have had quads. And then he still tried to tell us that it was a fold. But Ben, we, we both know better. You don't fold Pocket 4s at the final day of the High Roller Super Millions when Nano and Roddy are watching. Uh, but you know, Nano, before before we dive into that, that promo that is happening, just take a look at Twitter. Yes, guys, GG Poker on Twitter. There is too many promos anyway. GG Poker loves giving away stuff. That's what I've noticed. Speaking of that, I took number three in the GG Care tournament. I woke up and I'm like, why, why do I have like 300 cash dollars? I was like, oh my God, while I was sleeping, I apparently flipped for GOAT status and made top three out of like 2,000 entries. That's pretty sick. And then, no, no, five minutes. You, you want to convince me to fire one more little bet. You know, I had a pretty good week at the poker tables. I got a bit out of line, you know. And sometimes in five cards, you get out of line. It pays off. You want to convince me to bet something. Oh, man. I mean, I to be honest, I do like your three picks there. Um, I know you don't like chip leaders. Um, if, I, if I were you and I was your friend, I am your friend. I'm looking, at, I'm, I'm looking at Daniel Divorce for you. He seems like a type of guy you would like to bet. Um, he's in the middle. He's getting 13.5 to 1. I don't know if he's done really well in one of our tournaments yet, but he's always had the heart to kind of go for it. You see, you know, he'll make moves. He'll reshove spots. He doesn't skip them. I think he's good friends of Isaac Haxon. They got that kind of similar play style where they just kind of go for it. Except Isaac Haxon's won it. Daniel has it. Um, that's cool. Well, Daniel has won it. It took oh, a long he? time. Yeah, it took okay. a long, long time, but he did win it once. Okay, I remember. Then uh, that means he he had multiple. I, I know he's came to our final table with chip leads many times. Um, just that some disaster would happen, he'd just lose like most of his chips. Um, so that's the first thing I think of uh, for you. Otherwise, I would have went straight to the bottom. But that's kind of YOLO, you know. Adrian Mateos, there, uh, twenty-four to one, the Elky bet. Um, but I, seems like a rowdy bet to me if you're interested in throwing a little more dollars now. So Danny or Adrian? I mean, maybe Elky's onto something. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Do you want to leave your friend hanging like that? I don't know. Maybe he should put a little bit. Maybe not too much since he's at the bottom, but it is something to think about. And he did ship our tournament before. All right. If, if the sick fish believes, then I believe. $30, you would win $720. Elky, this better be good advice, mate. <laughs> 30 bucks. I want, it's almost it's almost equal to your other bets out there. But hey, that's uh, going to be your biggest bet, right? Yeah, that's technically then the biggest win. Huh. I believe. I mean, it's, tonight is just fun. Tonight, like the longer I look at the list, I'm like, yeah, I should bet on Daniel. Uh, I feel like there is legitimately five and then including the chip leader, obviously six people that I feel like are really good bets. I don't think I would bet on the random Chinese dude. I don't think I'd bet on who's who me. And Marius Giesa last week. I mean, Marius was playing for the page jumps, and that's okay, Marius. I do the same thing. Now, I don't think that he's going to run up the 700,000 chippies. I think that the other guys, I don't think you can really go wrong. So I guess I should just close the client before I'm splashing around way too much. Uh, let's hope Elki gave us a, a cheeky extra buy in for the PLO streets later on. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're telling me you're doing pretty good there, so that's good to see. But anyway, I don't think you can really go too wrong with any of the guys in the top five for sure. And, you know, they got decent amount of chips, so it's all buddy. With a 40 big blind rollback too, like everyone's got a lot of play. So you need one's game. So cool. You know, we have five previous champs at this table. Obviously, those are all season one champs. Nobody has won it in season two. I did see that Ottomar, our season, our episode one champ, had a pretty decent run in his second bullet. And I completely forgot the name of the guy who won last week, but he was so good, Nano. Like, that was legitimately one hell of a performance against Bert Stevens and, and throughout the rest of the evening. I really feel that they set the bar high, man. Like, our first two champs last season, we obviously had a couple of episodes where we're like, Okay, that guy won, but let's be real, he got lucky. The guys that won our first two episodes of Season 2, they played so good, like, without sucking up or anything. Generally really impressed by the level of play we saw. 
Yeah, I agree with you. And it's two. It was two guys, two new guys, right? Like two guys we've never seen before. They're crushing. That means there's so many more sequels out there. I think it was David Zep. Is that right? Yeah, well, it was a Hungarian, like a Zlep or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't exactly. like. I, the funny thing is, you said who won last week. I couldn't remember either. I was like just really thinking while you're doing a little spew of information there. But um, yeah, no, he he was really good. Um, speaking of Bert Stevens, I was uh, watching and he was doing really well. He went mm-hmm. for a move against Ben CB. Didn't make the money. Two off the money. Uh, he went with the Ace Queen uh, close to the bubble, and Ben CB called him. And there were some pretty uh, tricky hands I saw Ben CB played. And you know, like it, we'll see. I think we'll see one of them in our in our pre-show. But uh, I, yeah, I love this. The tables have turned, Nanoka. Normally, you're the one who rolls out of bed at 5 a.m., and I'm the one who's done all the prep, all the homework, the railing on the Sunday Already. night. You never say hi. Uh, now the tables are turned. It was Roddy getting drunk in Stockholm. And look at Nenonoko. He's been taking notes, watched everything. I love it. Yeah, no, I'm ready, man. Like, because uh, right now, on our little side bet, no one's got any points on either side <laughs> bet. I'm getting points today, hands down. Although this is probably the, one of the hardest ones to pick today on uh, who's going to ship it, in my opinion. But uh, there's people who believe. Look at the top two. Eleven thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars on Fiesta Pagana, six fifteen thousand on Ben CB, right? But look at the difference. It's a hundred thirty-five people believe in Fiesta, higher bet average, yeah. but more, way more people on Ben CB. These are probably like all the guys who follow him on Twitter, you know, follow his mm-hmm. club. Uh, so, ben, you know, yeah, it's more like a, a fun, a fun these. sweat, right? Like it's it's just yeah. fun to bet on your streamer. It's fun to bet on your favorite player because it just makes watching the show a little bit extra fun. I gotta say, like, I know that Fiesta Pagana has a lot of chips, but it's all relative. Because let's say in, in a world, Ben CB has a big hand with Limitless, the first uh, the first one, and they throw like 1.4 million chips in the middle, then Ben has more chips than Pagana. And I'm actually surprised that the odds for Fiesta Pagana are that low. Um, even though he's a chip leader, he's a chip leader of just a very, very, very fierce final table. I would would not have minded betting on him if it was a bit more, you know, if, if I'm getting like five to one be like ah, okay let's see if you can close it out but like three and a half million chips is nice but the rest of the table combined i mean you're looking at close to seven or eight million chips so it's not like he's got half of the chips in play it's going to be real hard for him to close it out yeah well you know a lot of times poker shares with these screen name people they just uh, kind of like give them give you better odds because like well no one's going to bet on him um Kind of like the Chinese guy right there, 14. It seems like it's probably boosted a bit, right? Like, cause look at Daniel Divorce. He's got half his, like, what, 900,000. Chinese guy's got 1.4 million, but you know, the yeah. odds uh, speak differently, right? But I'm guessing Fiesta Gana, Pagana is a guy who's plays these tournaments regularly. Uh, maybe he hasn't done well yet, but we know there's a lot of big, big guys who showed up at the very end of season one who did really well, like Elio Fox comes to mind, you know, Thomas Mulocker. They just keep showing up over and over again. So, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know who what do you think? Uh, <laughs> what do you think the name of our Chinese player stands for? I I Y Y B B W W. I know it's just, gosh, man, I have no idea to be honest. This is like Chinese people. They use like just they got like the weird, the, the simplest screen names a lot of times too. Like I, there's a there's a Chinese guy that plays on the side and he plays here too. Uh, but his screen name was like Z Z Z Z Z Z Z like W W W W Y. It's like very similar to this. It's just a bunch of gibberish. All right, because I'm like when I see B W, I always think of Brood War, you know, which is the Starcraft that Alki used to play. <laughs> uh, well, maybe not. Anyway, all right, let's just go ahead and dive into our actual pre-show. As you guys can see, the spirit is high today. I'm just happy to be home again. So I don't have to worry over technology because everything should work here. And when I saw this lineup, I'm like, my goodness, this is going to be a joy, Nanoka. None of this even feels like work. I'm so excited to be here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the nine profiles of the guys that have made it to our final table. And then obviously go over some of the hands. And I already did that. I did do a little bit of homework. And we've got some really fun hands and a lot of pocket sevens. That's all I will say. So let's kick things off with the profile of our man who comes in as the chip leader. Fiesta Pagana, I already asked you, Nanonoko, is this someone that like I, I should know because he clearly plays a lot. He also played a little bit in the High Roller Super Mario in Season 1, uh, didn't have any monster scores, but he just seems to be a good regular with a lot of like decent scores, but hasn't really made those absolute monster scores yet. And maybe that's why we don't see him every week in the 10Ks. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do think he plays a decent amount of the 10k season one, just hasn't done uh, that well in them. But, you know, like I said, there's a lot of crushers out there that haven't had their moment to shine. Some Maybe it's season two. Uh, he's got 101 big blinds. Um, he is a guy who plays all the tournaments. Because whenever I look at the lobbies, especially, when, you know, the guys who are playing those side events, right? Those guys are, are pretty good. I think I've seen him in those, like, 5k side events and stuff like that. The ones where they're not big fields, but, you know, just for the, for the high roller grinders and believe he's firing away in those too so i'm gonna guess uh he's a good player we just have no idea who he is mm -hmm. well as you guys can see it is a well filled up profile this is not one of these dudes that opened the client on a sunday and it's like let's play a satellite somehow got here no it seems to be a regular in a lot of the 1ks the 3ks and sometimes a bit bigger than that let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that our chip leader had on his journey to his first final table of season two it gets a bit crazy when you look at it like this you're like well four hands but the only hand that truly matters is the one on the left thomas mulocker i honestly feel that thomas mulocker is just unlucky man it feels like whenever we cover him he always busts early we take a look at hand histories we take a look at how people took chips away from thomas mulocker i would not be surprised if thomas hates us with a passion at this point no no call but this is not us we do not hand pick these hands uh, i think this one yeah I mean, yeah, you don't fall this king, right? Even if Thomas Mulocker jams on you, you just don't fall this king. Yeah, don't worry. I, I went through the hand histories too, Roddy. You'll be able to handle a decent amount. Production made it easy for us. They know you didn't do your research. Um, but um, Thomas Mulocker, he got 12th place in this one, if I recall correctly. So he got another deep. I wanted to see five back to back to back. I don't even know how many times you got to say back to back, but final table. <laughs> didn't do it this time. But uh, I do feel a Thomas Mulocker win in season two at some point like it just seems like destiny right we still got 50 episodes to go all right next time he makes final table if he has anything more than 35 big blinds i'm fully sending it on thomas he's the only one i pick he's the only one i'm betting on yeah and i took a look at the hands as well and then i also love that after 40 or 57 weeks you still think the only hands that i can handle are the ones where they open <laughs> rip it free flop and then i can talk about the action thank you mate it makes me feel real good about myself obviously this was a good one for yes afghana ace king did hold against the ace queen suited let's move on and take a look at the man who comes in in second place he is a previous champ one of the five previous champs we have at our final table tonight I generally think that's the most we ever had. I don't think we ever had a lineup. We often talk about our dream lineup, our star-studded lineups with only champs. Well, five out of nine, that's a lot. Ben CB, of course. Uh, I mean, who doesn't know Ben at this point? Is it possible to be involved in the world of poker and not know who Ben is? At this point, I believe not, especially because uh, <laughs> he does stream a pretty good amount of poker, right? Like, when he streams poker, he some guys maybe they play high stakes and they don't they don't want to stream they don't want to share their secrets or you know they might play a little different they might play a little bit lower right but he's still firing his 10ks and 25ks on stream for you guys um so he was hype the great thing about ben is not only he's got a great mindset as you can see in this little video you know he's uh good in, he's in exercise uh he, he's just He's, he doesn't tilt in my opinion like you, you can hear him right like you told me like he, he wins yeah. the tournament he's like yeah it looks like we won <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's great he's a great player um he doesn't play much lately just because you know he plays when he wants to that's a good mindset some guys out there like patrick leonard never miss a sunday ben cb doesn't you know i'll play sunday if i want to play sunday you know and it's a different mindset but he does really well for not playing that much because I believe I looked at season one. He only played 19 of the 52 episodes, and he got a win in the fifth place. It's a good, good track record. I love that you mentioned Patrick Leonard, mate. That man is playing football games in the morning, firing 27 football bets on the Euros in the afternoon, and then it's Sunday. He's like, guys, never miss a Sunday. And then you see a couple of poker tables come by again. I'm like, I, I think I'm, <laughs> I, I, I want to live a life. Like Patrick Leonard, that just sounds great. He's ordering football jerseys one after another. I don't know how many he has at this point, but it's fun to see. Uh, I always do love watching Ben stream. Like you said, he's just very chill and doesn't get angry, doesn't get upset. And uh, I love the reasoning behind a lot of his decisions. Let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the many hands that Ben played last Sunday when he did feel like playing. And this one, Nenonoko, what I was most surprised by is honestly the check back on the river by Bert Stevens. That's a, that's a pretty sick chuckback, if you ask me. 
is a sick sick check back yeah and i watched his hand on the ben cb stream and he when he saw that check he was very surprised and then he was just kind of talking about it like throughout the stream after like he wasn't sure if he nine should be checking he thought it was impressive um mm -hmm. as played from ben cb's point of view it's totally standard in my opinion you know you check call of two sevens on this kind of board it's not something you want to get raised on you got equity you check call because you hit a set, might have the best hand on the turn, and then you hit the boat. It makes sense to keep checking because your opponent could have a hand like, say, queen jack or just something random. King queen just firing away because you look weak. And the board is very, very scary um, in general for, for the guy who check calls as the free flop raise. And this hand happened uh, about three from the money, if I recall correctly. So also, maybe why Burt Stevens leaned towards the check a little bit more. Um, you know, he's still sitting on 20 big blinds here, roughly. Trying to, you know, like, because there are guys out there that had, like, three big blinds and stuff like that. And, and five big blinds. So, I can get behind it. Um, but he still seemed like he thought pocket nines should probably bet a lot. Uh, because he doesn't think he would show up with a boat there too much. But he he did uh, thought Bert Stevens played this hand uh, pretty well. And just couldn't stop talking about it, to be honest. Yeah, well, when I saw it, I was like, damn, that's honestly sick. Uh, I was like, hmm. And then you look at it and you're like, well, there's obviously like no world where Ben suddenly bets. Like that'd be a bit weird, I guess, as well. Unless he just wants to pretend he has like a king ten or an ace ten or something. But it's, a, I was really impressed. It made, I was like, well, there's a reason why I guess Bort Stevens took second place like last week. <laughs> that man on his farm is still incredibly good at poker, and it's. Uh, it was an impressive one. Let's go ahead and move on as we have only 19 minutes left until our actual show starts. If you guys are new to this, we have a pre-pre-show where we talk about final table betting. This is our actual pre-show. And then at 30 minutes past 8 Central European Summertime, that's when the cards go up in the virtual air. We all can't wait. Who's up next? Is it time to talk about Limitless already? Yes, it is. Viktor Marinowski, you doubted him, Brandy. You thought he was never going to make a final table. And I think it's safe to say that he has proved you wrong quite harshly even. Like, he won it. He got a second place. And he's becoming more and more of a regular when it comes to making deep runs at our High Roller Super Million. He actually does really well in uh, high stakes tournaments across all. Because obviously he plays every site and everything out there. Um, yeah, I was giving, I was teasing a bit. I was it's not saying that I think he's a bad tournament player or anything. No, he just didn't do well yet um, until February 21st. So that was very far into the year in season one, right? But when he did that one, he almost shipped it, lost the Ferrari, man. But he came back on May 2nd, had a great performance. Like every time he's placed uh, the second and first place, those ones were really smooth sailing, in my opinion, from Limitless. Um, him coming in third place, it's play style. It's a great bet, in my opinion, for you, Roddy. Um, mm -hmm. He plays for the win. He plays a little different. He gets in there. He's willing to see flops. He tries to outplay people post flop, and he does. Um, Great player all around, and yeah, ready to see him play. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that he had. I saw this hand, and I just smiled. I was like, yes, you sicko. <laughs> don't let him bet you. Uh, or don't let him bluff you, rather. We had Limitless Raising Preflop Ben called from the Big Blind, I believe. It is indeed Bottom versus Big Blind. And this is kind of a random board, you know, 8-8 eight, eight dudes. Doesn't really connect anyone in the 6-5. Ben tried to steal it. This is not an ace high call, no, 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 it's a king high call, and he was good. How did, uh, how did Ben react to that one? <laughs> I mean, I didn't see this one, I guess a little bit yeah. before I started watching, but yeah, this is a really cool hand, right? Like, um, that's that's why tonight's show is going to be excellent, because we've got, like, not just good players, like, amazing players against each other, and they fight for every pot against each other, and you can see Ben CB... You know, he's like, looks like my opponent's got A's high here. I'm just gonna try and move him off of it because, uh, you know, I, it's a big blind. You're not betting. Hits me a little bit. Try to value bet here. And Limitless, he's not scared. He's like, yeah, it looks like I got A's high, but I actually have worse. We've got King high. Makes the call down. It's just a sick call. Quite ownage here. Um, yeah. Really well played from, from obviously Limitless. But Ben CB, I, I don't mind it too because there's a lot of guys out there who won't call. With even just ace high on this board, just thinking, look, it looks like you're value betting me. We're deep in the tournament. Um, this is going to be some mind, mind games today. It's going to be good. Mm -hmm. 
But I think that most people probably have limitless labeled as don't bluff this guy. Like, <laughs> I, I think we all know that he likes to call and he hates to get bluffed. That's why I was so triggered when he folded the ace high ones in that little heads up exhibition match he had with Fader. It was like the first episode. And I had a friendly bet with one of my friends. He's like, oh, Fader. I was like, no, limitless. And then he had like ace high on a double pad board and he folded. I'm like, what? Who is this guy? What has he done to limitless? This doesn't happen. This is a little more of the limitless we got to know and love. We love to see it. Let's go ahead and move down the list as I believe next up is the beautiful profile of Isaac Hexton. Hollywood Ike, he's back. Obviously has won it once. Did not have the hottest season. Uh, season one of the High Roller Super Millions. As you guys can see, number 42. Isaac is a uh, very serious regular. There weren't many Sundays that he missed out on. Isaac also likes to fire multiple bullets. It's a... Uh, it hasn't been like the best tournament series ever for him, but it seems like season two is off to a decent start. Yeah, it's a good start for him. Um, the only reason is because Isaac Haxon, he just he fires away on those bullets, you know? He will register until registration closes. It doesn't matter yeah, how yeah. many bullets are necessary. <laughs> so yes, he's got a first place and a third place finish, but given his style of play, you know, you need to post some even more big scores out there. But season two is here. Uh, he's doing well, I'm sure, like because he plays other tournaments out there, and he's he's the Prince of Darkness. That's what Jungle Man calls him. So, like, I'm ready to see him play too. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that I had on this journey to the final table. This is a brutal one, and probably one of these earlier bullets. Pocket sevens once again. It went all in on the flop. Very unfortunate river for Mr. Isaac Haxton. I mean, I think they both played their hand fine, right? I agree. I guess the real question is, did he rebut or did he run up to 16K to whatever, how many million chips he's got now? Oh, I know that he's in for three bullets, so I'm going to go with <laughs> rebuy, Nanonoko. This was the third bullet. He's like, I'm done. If I lose this one, I'm out. And he was spinning up. That's what I'm going with. Probably not. All right, if that's the story you want to share with our audience, I'll let you run with it. But guys, just know that Isaac is in for three bullets. So there is a chance that this was not this one. Obviously, there's nothing he could really do here. Played it fine. His opponent yeah. with the sevens probably just played it fine too. Let's go ahead and move on. Going down the list. That means it's not time to talk about Daniel DeVores yet. Because he actually has way less chips than this guy. You said, no way, it's Brute War. Like, I kind of read it as I love Root War, okay? And then he just, oh. you know, he added a couple of things, but... <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is a relatively empty profile. As you guys can see, this is a satellite player. Came in with a 1K satellite. His first appearance has never played a high roller Super Millions in the previous year. I mean, 40 big blinds is awesome. Don't think we can say much more about this profile, can we? <laughs> He hasn't played much. You know he hasn't played much when you look at the right, and we got to put a satellite entry as his GG poker results. You want to seat into this tournament because he doesn't have any other scores we can post. Um, he was playing very tight uh, when Ben CB was on. He hadn't had like three or four big blinds, picked up aces at the right time. Uh, but, you know, Ben CB was raising his big blind on the bubble with 8-3 offsuit. So I'm going to guess today he's going to go for some ladders. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that this magical unknown player has had also kind of a brutal one where apparently he had aces and he went up against the queen 10 of hearts of adrian mateus adrian fully going for it on the river check on the turn cheeky cheeky by adrian isn't that yeah um it is a three bad pot though it makes sense he didn't want to take the lead but he got maximum value he went for all in you know, he didn't bet any less, and he got called by the aces, which I don't fault on this board. It's still very strong. Um, yeah, I guess he wins of aces and loses of aces. It is the game. Mm -hmm. Also has the ace of clubs, so it's a little bit less likely that Adrian is doing this with a flush draw or with any mate flush. Mm -hmm. Nothing you can really do, I guess. But hey, the man managed to run it up. He's still here. He's at the final table, and we look forward to his performance tonight. That means that now it should be time. To talk about the profile of the man who did win it. You tried to take that away from him. Nanonoko. Daniel DeVores has won a high roll of Super Millions. You're this right. is a, once more one of the sexiest profiles I think we, we have in our pre-show. It feels like it just looks great across the board, mate. Like, <laughs> there's nothing bad about this profile. Nah, man. How often do you see a guy with a, a 4 million for one score? That's very rare. Um, amazing. He's actually done really well in a Super... What? A first, a set third, and a fifth? Um, 
Yeah, no, he's good. Uh, I, I, I didn't know he got a third place once. Okay. I didn't know he got a first place. I'm just, I'm dogging this guy when he shouldn't be dogged. He's doing amazing, it seems, Roddy. My bad. Take it yep. back. I mean, we did hype him up often to win it in the beginning, and then he didn't win it. But eventually, Daniel did finally take care of business. Let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Daniel DeVores had on this journey to this sevens. final table. And guess what? It's Pocket Sevens again. I have the feeling that we might see Pocket Sevens make a set tonight as well. I mean, Pocket Fours would have made what? I'm just saying, very relevant to this hand. And he's battling it out with Isaac Haxton. What do you make of this hand, Nanonoko? I mean, basically, it's not too much action in this hand, but uh, the point is that Daniel DeVores will go for a big check raise uh, with a big hand. Um, you know, some guys, like, when they see check, check on turn, like, hey, well, I've got a bet. Just try to get something out of my opponent. Uh, but he still goes for a check knowing his opponent. So, yeah, you got to be worried. The river check raise can always be coming. Yep. Isaac did not take it, though. He's like, you know what? If you're beat, you're beat. And he wasn't just beat. He was very beat. Let's go ahead and move on. As we have a few more profiles to cover. And I would actually like to see the seat selection. That's how excited I am for tonight, Danonoko. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm actually excited for yeah. the seat selection. But just because we have so many big names, I really want to see where they end up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the profile of this man, who's made it to our final table last week as well. That's impressive, of course. The very first back-to-back -back final tableist of Season 2. Actually, that's not true, because Thomas Miloka did it in Week 1 and Week 2. But yeah, good to see Marius Gears back. Yep, um, he's a cash game player, I believe. Back-to-back uh, -back final table is always good in three episodes of Season 2. Last week, he was playing a little bit tighter, um, you know, trying to get those pay jumps here and there. So, I'm not sure how he's going to be playing today, but uh, we'll see. Actually, he has a couple of monster scores as well on the top right side. Winning uh, one of the 10Ks, WSOP side event. Winning, in, wow. He had a, he had a great wow. summer. I don't know what happened in Austria over the summer, but Marius Gears had an absolutely phenomenal summer. Cool to see him obviously make his second final table in a row. Last week, I think a little bit timid. I think that's fair to say. Now, of course, there was a lot of fireworks last week, and I guess if you're not getting the hands, it is hard to always get involved and in the mix, but I didn't have the feeling that Marius Gears was ever going to win it all. But he was a survivor. He hung in there. Can't wait to see how he does this week. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that our Austrian had on his journey to this final table. I think this one is maybe a little bit more interesting as he was battling it out with one of your favorites, Nenonoko, Bruno Volkman. The floor is yours. Talk to me. Yeah, uh, it is blind versus blind. He limp calls the A7. Check calls the top two pair because he knows Volkman's crazy. And then the pair is the five on the turn. Decides to lead out. Didn't want his letters to the opponent check it back. Uh, and plus, it's also a board where someone doesn't really just fire random hands against you, even if you are Bruno Volkman. So he does lead on the turn. Um, try not to let like weak aces just kind of pot control a bit. And he goes for all of it. On one of the scariest cards in the deck, right? The six of hearts. Because, you know, the eight, nine got there. The two hearts got there, obviously. Um, just rips it in for pot, pretty much. And, and Volkman makes a, a crying call base nine. And look. If he had checked his A7 on either the turn or river, I don't think he would get as many chips as he did because Ace-9 um, you know, it's kind of one of those weak showdown type hands and still got paid off. So, you know, we saw Marius play a little bit tight uh, last week, but if you're getting called down here by Ace-9, then you definitely got some moves, I'm going to guess. Or it's just way early in tournament. People still have registration open. Yeah, Bruno doesn't mind firing another bullet, let's be real. Yeah. I agree. He, he is no stranger to the second or the third. I saw that, uh, yeah, like I said before, a couple of guys that have done very well in season one, they were firing away. It's always fun to just go over the lobby and be like, whoo, tough week, perhaps a tough Sunday. But sometimes you worry, like, oh man, that seems like a really crappy Sunday. But then they win one of the other 5K events at the same day. And I was like, ah, oh, you know what? You've still, you've still done all right. They probably still go to bed with a smile on their face. And that means that we have time to cover our. Final profile as well before we go ahead and hop into the live action tonight. Our shortest stack coming into We got two table people, Roddy. Three. We got two people. Don't forget one of them, all right? Oh, Don't worry. Okay. Actually, I did forget. My uh, Word document did not go f f that far down. I, I was actually scared. I was like, wow, we have two profiles left nine minutes. This is, we're rushing it. But 
No, we're actually right on track. Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile of who's who me. 888. When I see 888, because of you now, I always think of Chinese players. I'm like, all right, this guy, 100% Chinese Canadian. They love the eights. He's probably going to play pocket eights. He's going to love ace eight suited. What have you done to me, Nenoko? I may have corrupted you with pocket fours, but you have done terrible things to me when it comes to Chinese players and eights. Whenever a Chinese player raises me from the small blind, I can't take it serious. I'm like, he's got, a, he's got an eight and he's going ham. <laughs> this is all your fault. No, they really do love the eights and uh, pocket eights is the pocket ace is the second best hand in the game for them, you know? Uh, but he just got qualified for $108. That's, That's sick. really hard to do, okay? Like 1K, okay, I can see you just enter one on 1K, right? But this guy had to like win multiple satellites to get in here. Um, so I feel like the two satellite guys in here today they're gonna have a tough time because this is one sick lineup. This guy comes in near the bottom. Uh, good luck to him. That's honestly sick. Qualified to a qualifier to get into the main event and then make it to the final table immediately. Well done, who's whom he hated eight. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that this man had on his journey. Other than that, we see that he has a couple of decent scores on the top right side, but obviously not too many appearances in the high roller super millions by the looks of it. And this is a... Uh, Actually, kind of a, a funny one as well. I'll let you do the talking, but a good old small blind versus big blind battle. Yeah, it's a race pot two pre flop, and they got like the two worst hands in the game, right? Like the deuce four <laughs> and the deuce five somehow is dominated with the deuce four. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a weird hand because, you know, high fan fan, like, I think he's trying to punish this guy who doesn't really play these storms with five dupes offsuit, makes a pair, but they check a lot. And who's who me here? He has a he has a flush on the flop doesn't bet. Has a flush on the turn doesn't bet. And then he gets value on the river on one of the ridiculous runs out still from a pair of fives deuce kicker. Um, based on the hands you see, it's really well played. But I'm not too sure what who's who me was going for in this hand. Like, does he have some second level reads? Was he a little scared? I have no idea. Yeah, you don't often see. Two guys battling it out where the five deuce is just completely dominating the hand of the other guy. It's uh, one of the very first when we took a look at some of the hands that these guys had on the journey to the final table. But hey, it happened. In the end, the four deuce suited was better than the five deuce off suit down. It's a big one for who's Huni. And so look at High Fan Fan on the river as well, just making that call with the five deuce, Nenonoko. It's like, well, I can't think of too many hands that you're really beating here, but. Apparently he believed. He wants to show that he will raise your big blind with five deuce in the small. That's like the most disrespectful thing you can do in this game. But he did it. <laughs> that means we have time to cover one more profile. And that is the pick of our favorite sick fish. Good old Elki. I follow, you know, it's fun to follow Elki on Instagram. Because Elki just also has way too much fun. We're all sitting here. And it's like another lockdown. And you're like, oh, no, can't go anywhere. And then Elki's in Dubai, Elki's in Croatia. Well, I'm a little bit jealous, Nenonoko, I'm not going to lie. I want some of the sunshine that Elki has in his life. And this is time. This obviously means it's time to talk about Adrian Mateus. Elki said that he believes that he can still do it all. Apparently, Adrian Mateus was the youngest to win three WSOP bracelets at the age of 22. He has won the High Roller Super Millions before. I know you've picked him many times to win it, Nenonoko. I've picked him a couple of times. I've bet on him a couple of times. I do believe the week that he did win, I did have some money on him, so I was grateful for that. But he also let me down a few times when he was in a really good spot. Yeah, uh, but he actually was number seven season one of the Super Millions, so that's a very, very high. One of our big uh, names out there. Great player, just at the bottom with 15 big blinds, but uh, he, needs a one he needs more than one double today. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the many hands that Adrian played on Sunday. <laughs> yes, no, no, no call. Doesn't count, mate. Doesn't count. You don't get yeah, a point no. for this one. Pocket fives for Adrian Tejas. Didn't just make a set. The man made quads. Talk to me, Nano. I mean, this hand is it's as easy as played, right? Like, the guy bets into you guys' set. You got position. You call. You make quads. He bets. Of course you're going to call. You still got quads. He bets all in. Well, you call. Simple. Well done. <laughs> Is that what sweet poker dreams are made of? You know what's a... I mean, like, obviously in a five card, anything is possible. But last... Uh, I was playing last Sunday. As we can just go ahead and take a look at our beautiful table. Because I want to see the seat selection. I want to see who ends up where. 
you know, at the cash table. So not talking about Russian cash. I'm just talking about the regular cash mm -hmm. tables and GG. Whenever you hit a jackpot, like you get a little uh, beautiful color around your box, you know, and it hears the sound like, ding, 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 ding. and then most of the time I don't even pay attention anymore. So I'm like, I got an all in and I had another all in because it was four tabling, like five card PLL. And I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's nice. I got it. And suddenly I'm like, where did my money go? And we both made a jackpot. I made quad tens and the guy made a straight flush. So I got a little jackpot, but I actually lost the pot. And the pot was bigger than my little jackpot. I was like, what the hell? I feel rough. But I guess in five card PLO, Nananaka, anything is really possible. All right. I guess it's time for you. It's betting time. I, I, yeah. I, I already know what you're going to pick, though. No, not necessarily. You know, I'm, 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 I'm torn because, uh, you know, if there was a week to go second, this is the one because you you'll get a good pick no matter what in this one today. Um, my initial thought was I want to pick Ben CB. This guy streams mm -hmm. and stuff like that, right? But then I heard you put money on him, and every time you put money on someone, I feel like things go to they don't do so well in season two, right? Then I'm like limitless. God put money on him, right? You put money on him too, goddamn it, and Isaac Haxton. And you know what? You didn't put money on the chip leader, Fiesta Pagana. I think I'm picking Fiesta Pagana today, Roddy. Oh my I'm God. gonna get some points on the ladder. He's the chip leader. The guy he called off with Vase King. He's going for the win. That you know what? That's my pick today, Roddy. I'm going Fiesta Pagana. I'm getting points on the board today. Man, I actually have a really hard time picking between the three guys that I put initially money on because I like all three. I, I, I like the styles. Maybe Limitless would be like the worst pick because he's like kind of crazy. But on the other end, he also plays for the win so much more than I feel anyone else at this final table even. Uh, I want to flip a coin, but how do I flip a coin between three players? You got to pick. All Hurry right, up, I'll Roddy. Oh, I'm just going to go ahead and pick Ben CB because I know you want to pick Ben CB and then you're going to be like, oh, I want you to pick Ben CB, so your pick doesn't even count. Lock it in. Ben CB it is for me. All right, Ben CB. I mean, like, he's a really good pick. I'm a little worried not picking him just because he doesn't play too much and he always does really well. I'm just hoping the, the Roddy put money on all those guys out there factor comes into play and then the guy he didn't pick wins it today. So it's going Wait. to be a good one. I don't know why you're trying to spin this narrative that I lose money on final table betting. The only <laughs> reason why I'm arguably down is because I've took advice from you many times and you have <laughs> never in your life given me a single good pick. Okay. I have burned hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars by listening to who you think I should put money on. But when it came to my own picks, I've actually done quite all right. Don't forget when Ben CB did win it, he was like 12 to one and I put a hundred bucks on him. So I'm doing fine in Anoka. You are doing fine. Um, but there's also one more factor I forgot to mention on why I picked Fiesta Pagano was he's the chip leader. And you want to watch final table selection, right? And I know he was going to take position on Ben CB. And that's what he did here on final table seating. So he'd get the best pick. If roles were reversed, Ben CB is the chip leader. There's no way I wouldn't pick Ben CB. But I'm hoping that him taking position on Ben CB will help uh, give him a little extra edge he needs. I mean, this is actually like just looking around. This is such a sick table because you're like, oh, Isaac Haxton kind of has a crappy spot too because he's got two monster stacks to his right. So how much do you really want to get out of line just because you have position? Then you got Adrian Mateus on your left. Maybe if Adrian Mateus can run up some chips, I actually kind of like his seat, but it's going to be hard. And then obviously at Limitless, like at the top, it's like that's not too bad, but then he's got Daniel Devoris on his right. And then in the forest, whenever he's the button, he's got Ben CB in the big blind. It, it feels like it's hard to get a good spot. Our Chinese player does end up winning the first hand here with ace three. Yes, Fiesta Pagana, ace king. And, you know, he might get some action from Ben CB with a dominated hand. Well, we've seen what Ben CB is capable of with king six, mate. Imagine what he can do with king seven. It's not the same. That's not one of those hands where you can just pump it up. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> God damn. You're so lucky. Hey, there's two more streets to come. I feel like Yama's doing this on purpose because, you know, the Ace of Spades is going to roll off somewhere. It's going to be hard for Fiesta Pagana to win it. He's obviously going to need to find an Ace or he just need to bully his way through or running clubs. Uh, that is a bigger bet. Kind of annoying. But Ben's still with a relatively quick call. The Nine of Clubs is an interesting turn and I think also kind of a scary one for Ben. Let's see how this one plays out. Wow, interesting hand, second hand of the night. All right, yeah. Nanaka. 
It's also scary for Fiesta Vagana. It's the type of card that hits the big blind really well. You know, like 10 9, 10 8, not too close. Like, but then, like, you got equity, you got good equity against. He would get Ben CB to fold this hand if he bets again. He is going to wow. bet huge. Nice. Sicko. I win it. <laughs> Sicko. I mean, I feel like he just looked at his hand and he's like, if I had Ace King suited, I think he would have actually bet a lot smaller, obviously, on the turn. This could be a big one as well. Marius Gears oh. is one of our shorter stacks. He's got pocket eights. I think it is way too many big blinds to just open rip it. But let's see how he plays it. Yeah, it could be interesting because Fiesta, if he, I think if he jams, he's, he might get Marius to fold this hand because, you know, it's not a good spot. I hope he does jam, but I'm really I tilted because who, who's whom he just folded pocket fives pisses me off. Oh, I didn't even see it. <laughs> like, you're looking at the eight, you see pocket eights, you see eights going suited, I see pocket fives in the muck, and eights into the muck. Fiesta Bagana wins two of the big, uh, first two hands. Literally, first two hands, isn't it? Uh, two out of the first three. Uh, I love Brute War, is the one who won the first hand with ace three against Marius Giesen. I like the name. You know, I can get behind that. I love Brute War. Um, you were talking about seat selection earlier, and I actually think Limitless has got a good seat. He's kind of away from the big guys, the yeah. big names out there. He's got um so two the two seats to his right and left are the two satellite guys, and they were playing quite tight uh, mm -hmm. leading up to the final table. So that means that should mean his big blind gets raised less by the button, and he can steal the big blind a lot. So I actually really like Limitless's seat. I agree with you, and I wanted to say that, but I thought it might come across uh, wrong because I don't want to be disrespectful towards Daniel DeVores because you can hardly say that having Daniel DeVores on your right is like, oh, that's a great place to be. But yeah, I think overall that part of the table, I do think I like where Limitless ended up. As Adrian Mateus, this is going to get it all in with his ace king suited. And Fiesta Pagana now learns the hard way that he can't win it all. Let's take a look if we have any interesting hands here because Nananoko, oh, Queens this time for Adrian. I don't think who's whom he is going to call, though, even if it is small blind, big blind. I think he's going to raise it up and lose some chips. But, oh, uh, yeah, what's up? Are you pumped for the semifinals of the European Championships of football tonight? You should ask, you should ask me who's in the finals because I can't name a team. Uh, yes, you England, can. England, right? Yep, they're in the semifinals. Only because I've been reading, like, not reading, but I just scroll through Pads' Instagram. I just keep them england flags everywhere so i'm just gonna assume he's deep Go yeah there deep. i think i think they're playing tomorrow uh england no tonight at 9 p.m so that is in 23 minutes it's a great game between spain and italy it's gonna be fun okay. who do you think is gonna win that nana <laughs> you try to get my advice uh yes i'm i'm going spain you know because uh we've got we've got agent mateos at this final table he's spanish but we don't have any italian players at this final table so i'm going <laughs> spain Solid reasoning, mate. Solid Who's reasoning. Who's the favorite, though? I have no idea. Italy is like a minor favorite, but it's considered to be a very close and competitive match. Yeah, I see. Yeah, should be good. I have, I have no mate, idea. what are these hands at Adrian Mateus? I, I don't know what Elki did. And I know that he's not really getting paid off yet, but Adrian Mateus is getting some sweet hands. And I got to say, if you start off as the shortest stack, you don't really want to have like these medium hands because it kind of sucks to fold your Jack 10 suited, your Queen 10 suited. But these are the easy ones to play. Queens, Ace King, Ace King. Lovely way to start off your final table, if you ask me. It's also it sets the tone really well, right? Like, because the first thirty minutes they have no idea, so they're just thinking, this guy, he's he just keeps he's reshoving on me. He's he's not afraid. And they maybe they'll fold a couple of spots that they wouldn't <laughs> raise. They may think like Adrian Mateus is Spanish. He wants to hang out with all his buddies and he wants to cheer for the national team. He's trying to bust in the first 22 minutes. He's going to get called soon by pocket force. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, get a little blind versus blind coming up. Not Why do I sure. feel like he's crazy enough to just like raise? Nah, he's big. not going to open jam. No, he didn't say he was going to jam. I know that's way too much, but he's going to raise big. <laughs> Oh, okay. he's gonna jam. Okay, I wanted to say that, but I was like, I'm not gonna say it because then you're like, no, oh, he's not gonna jam a 30 big blind. Have you not learned anything in the last year and a half? Limitless, just sometimes I feel like he just wants to get a hand over with. He's like, we're jamming here. <laughs> Look at Mateos, man. This guy was sitting on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Just keeps reshoving. I mean, and his reshoves picks up extra big blinds rather than him just opening and they just fold, right? Now he's got pocket tens. I think he's gonna get a little walk coming up. Yeah. Um, 
not walk, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, nah. Super excited. What else has been going on, Roddy? You didn't even ask me what's going on lately. I was a little offended. That's true, but that's because I've been so excited. I haven't like uh, I obviously it's like first the one. Of all, it's, it's the one week. It's my birthday pass. Didn't ask me how my how my week was going. Just freaking skipped it. I was like, let's just go straight into the action. We're not friends no more. I hope my guy wins. Go Fiesta Pagana. Seems like a Chinese player did defend, by the way. So Adrian did pick up a couple extra big wow. blinds. When was your birthday, Nananoko? The third. So I hope someone gets uh, 7-3 today and just go all in. The 3rd of July on Saturday. I was busy, man. I was just swarmed in StarCraft work and I had to play a little bit of poker on the side as well. Just, I couldn't make it. I'm sorry. I, I feel I feel kind of bad, actually. No, nah, don't. August 5th, the Jorah's coming up. So one month from now, I've got you, right? No, it's the 8th of May. <laughs> oh my God, I don't feel bad anymore about missing your birthday. What the fuck? <laughs> I knew, hey, I got the two numbers right. Yeah, that's that. only because I've been spamming it for a year and a half. You know what? I don't feel bad about missing your birthday. All right. How was it, Nananoko? Did you have a great time? Did you do anything special? I mean, not, nothing too special, but no, nah, it was, it's been great. But to be honest, you know what I've really been doing this week? Cause usually you ask me what's been going on the, the, yeah. in the poker world. And I think you, you're aware of it too, but you know, that Landon Bill ties, Perkins, Perkins, Bill Perkins, Bill Perkins, Landon ties. All right, go ahead. I mean, like, it's just, I'm just reading the memes. They just keep making me laugh, you know, like it's, did you follow it all? I mean, I didn't watch any of them, but I was been reading the updates and I just thought it's crazy that all of a sudden it's over 25% of challenge in. Yeah. Um, he was doing pretty good too. I think he was about nine BBs per hundred. All of a sudden I'm out, tap out. No, he had a, he had a big losing day. I think there was a moment where he was indeed close to hitting that marker, but I think after that, it actually went down a little bit and I believe it was like three and a half or four to one. At least that's when I checked. I hope for, uh, my chip leader doesn't do anything too well. He's like, hey, you remember what Limitless did <laughs> with Ace-9? He's going to raise it up though with 10-3. Let's see how Hollywood Ike plays his aces. But yeah, I've been following it. And I was a bit surprised too because I, I wanted to watch more of it. I watched a bit of the first episode, a bit of the second episode. And then I got I got busy and it wasn't quite as like entertaining as I hoped it would be. I agree. Uh, but I mostly just followed the Twitter updates and I was like, you know, when it gets closer or if there is a big crazy episode with a lot of big swings, I'll actually uh, keep an eye on it. And yeah, I was really surprised too to see it was just over. But it felt like it wasn't really a decision of Landon, right? It was more the yeah, backers, because, the coaches that got... have decided. Yes, for sure. Because I, th I think he was getting staked almost all of it, right? So yeah. if that's the case, well, you would never quit. You just, you know, usually guys would just keep fighting, right? But uh, the backers are like, nope, we're out of here. Uh, we don't want to take some damage. Uh, it's kind of surprising because we all know how heads up poker is. Like, you could just have, it could be the fall of the cards, you know, like mm -hmm. something that kind of just ruins your day. Um, but uh, the thing is, like, that challenge is at its all-time peak about what to talk, to talk about it now, now that it's over, which is funny. Right, not when you know during the challenge itself, you know Doug Polk is getting there with his needles and things like that, and you know he apparently he's got. To fly. I just thought it was just it, it's pretty. It's always some funny memes out there once in a while, you know. And but uh, I, Bill Perkins won the wins the challenge. That's a first too, because like, that guy he plays for fun, and you know he he does. Yeah, but events. he's okay. Okay, I I do want to address this. Now they're like, oh, Bill Perkins plays for fun. But Bill Perkins has been around forever. And he's always been involved in like the, the high promo TV games as well. And then you always see videos of Bill just chilling somewhere and playing poker. He may be a businessman first, but we also shouldn't pretend that Bill Perkins like doesn't really know what he's doing because he clearly has been getting ready for this too. Has obviously been watching a lot of heads up poker in the past. I feel like when Daniel and Doc were battling it out, as this could be a funny hint. Uh, he was watching, I think, almost every single minute of it. So, like, Bill Perkins is not like a random guy that doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying for sure. But you know, Bill Perkins also—that's the first time he put in effort to kind of just uh, to play some poker, and it, it really shined because you know it goes to show, like, if you're a smart guy and you're willing to do put in the work. Uh, yeah, nice play from Fiesta. But uh, if you're willing to put in the work, you can get things done. He just hasn't done it before. Uh, but then he finally did it and you know like i'm, I'm happy for him because i like i like to see the underdog win because i think he was a little bit of the underdog just going into it because well, i don't know the debatable because of nine bbs but just that yeah 
I guess what I wanted the better way to uh, present it is they were preying on Bill Perkins and trying to take his money, right? Because they're like, this is rich guy. He's not going to take it as, uh, wow, big hands. He's not going to take it seriously. And then they got him. That's all I want to really say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I have to admit, when I saw the 9 BB and you see what it actually translates to in pure money, I was like, whoa, that's going to be hard, man. Like he's not just going to have to play better. He's actually going to have to run properly good too. So I was surprised to see it end as well. I know, maybe feel a bit bad for Landon because it seems like he really took it too hard and then it wasn't really his decision and he's doing the whole oh I feel thing but yeah, he's still young hopefully he will bounce back he'll find the spirit yeah. let's see how Ben CB decides to play the tens Ooh. he's just gonna make the call tens are obviously good here flop and over pair let's see what Fiesta Bagana decides to do after three betting three flop yeah this could get dicey for sure and there's some funny turn cards that can uh, put a lot of pressure I feel like Fiesta Begun is involved in every hand, but then, like, he's lost a lot of hands, yet his stack seems quite similar to what he started with, so it should be, should be fun. Uh, There's a, yeah, a proper turn. quick check there by uh, Ben. I feel like Ben almost never, like, just snap checks, especially not... Oh. oh! After it goes check, check on the flop and check, check on the turn as well. The Ace of Hearts rolls off, and that means that Fiesta Bagana is now sitting on the best hand. Probably going to try to bet it for value. It just depends if he thinks he can get called by worse. He could. Ace, queen. Mm. Definitely in play. Um, mm -hmm. Does his opponent sometimes have like a weak, like a scary check? Like would Ben CB ever have like a random set? He thinks no, so he's going to go for it. Mm. You, you wonder if Ben CB is sick enough to check a raise? That's what I think you're thinking. No, no, no. I was thinking if he would have had a set, if he would have played it out like this, but I have the feeling that he wouldn't just snap check. I, I think Ben should know that the ace does very, very often connect with Fiesta Bagana. And if he did have an ace king, ace queen kind of hand here, that Fiesta probably would have played it like this because there's no reason to really see bet against the second biggest stack at the table on an eight, five, six board. I'd be surprised yeah. if Ben plays off or thinks he can make a move here. So what Ben is thinking about right now is would he still value bet an ace here on a four straight run out? And, um, you know, that's yeah. why he's taking his time. He makes a good fold here. Um, but I think it'd be really tough. Say Ben CB had like ace queen, ace jack. Oh, man, I don't know if he gets away. Oh, fucking kind of fives. What, what do you... Yeah. Oh, and it's limitless. <laughs> yeah. So that means it's... Yep. You Probably better fold seen... Marius. Nice. We're seeing a flop, Ben. I mean, not Ben. <laughs> I said we're seeing a flop, Ben. Like I'm, like Ben's my my mate here. No, it's Roddy. We're seeing a flop. Oh, close, mate. Oh. <laughs> close. Obviously, not the worst flop for Limitless, and I think he knows that. I, I was a bit surprised, mostly about how quick Ben checked the tens on the turn. When you get three bet three flop, but then the board is like just all low cards or medium cards, and you're opponent checks back on the flop cool. <laughs> your fives are surrounded mate <laughs> yeah yeah um i we'll get to that hand after this one could be interesting cool. potentially um uh yeah limitless it's a good pick did you pick limitless or ben cb to win I forget who to I swipe picked ben, i picked ben cb to win uh, well looks like you should have picked limitless now because he's got more chips i assume actually he doesn't that's not how math works one what guy has I mean, 357 is not 57 oh. is not higher than 78. <laughs> you got me. You got You're me. so bad at counting. It's actually I, I cannot believe how many hands of poker you played in your hand in your life and how bad you are doing some basic math. Let's see how who's whomy decides to play his kings. Yeah, but Mary strikes me a guy who's gonna just pass this. That's the song. Let's limp these two kings. Let's force them to see if. Oh, no. Um, let's go back to what you were saying. Should he he snap check that turn? And you, you're 100 yeah. right. He like he did a Ramashka check. Yeah, check yeah, yeah, it was quick. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I'm not saying that check was the wrong play. Is that he should have took some time because it's quite interesting. That's actually a turn card, the eight seven six five, that hits him way more than three better who checks three better who checks has a lot of ace kings ace queens mm -hmm. king queens and stuff like that um so it's a definite opportunity where he could maybe put even a quarter pot bet deny some equity the nine hits him way more so i'm actually very surprised he, he did check 
Or at least yep. and let's say even if he bet and he gets called and then the ace rolls off on the river, if he would then check, I'm not sure if Yester Vagana would actually still bet with the ace king, because then he might be a little bit more worried that Ben is setting the trap off, hoping that he is going to take the Shabet. So I was a little bit yeah. surprised by it. Well, Ben has got another opportunity, uh-huh. and Daniel the Forest could be in a tiny bit of trouble here. Let's see how the hand plays out. He's sitting on 24 big blinds. Um, yeah, if Minan, if Daniel DeVores had like 17, 18 big blinds, he might have just opened ripped this in the spot and then CB be getting a clear double, not double, like a clear knockout. But uh, as played, we're expecting some three bet folds coming up. Unless Daniel DeVores is just. Yeah, I don't think he's it's a ever big bet here. This is a I will call your shove no matter what you do kind of three. Yeah. <laughs> That is a big three bet by Ben. Kind of annoying for Daniel the Forest. I think at this point you just have to ask yourself, do I want to play with my tournament life on the line when there are two guys in the top left that are shorter than me, way shorter than me? Yeah, I'd, I'd be sad to be see surprised. him go for it here with the sixes. Even if Ben had an ace king or an ace queen, I still think that kind of stuff is a bit unnecessary. I 100% agree with you. Um, things could be def- different if you know the shorter stacks weren't as short as they were. Or he was even shorter himself. Um, and nine eight suited on the button. Gonna go for a limp. So he's just like, you know what? These are two sickos in the blinds. They got a good amount of chips. They're not scared. Gonna try and pot control a bit. So he's gonna let Isaac Axon get a free flop. Uh, I'm not sure how excited Ike is going to be about that with <laughs> Queen 5. He does hit us with the oh my god. The board shows up, ace, ace, jack. Not particularly great for either of them. Ben's playing fast today, huh? He just snap betting, snap checking. Oh, okay, I like it. Doesn't waste time. Actually, you know what's the funny thing Ben always does? Because I tune in the stream whenever he makes these deep runs here and there, right? Mm-hmm. But he always talks about how slow everyone's playing on the bubble. And it's, it, it, that's like the one thing that triggers him. Like, oh, it's so slow. Or like, it's going to take an hour. They're going to fold down to one big blind. And he's playing like super fast. That's like the one thing that gets him, I think. I, I, I can get it. Especially because often in these tournaments, for Ben, it's like entering 4 a.m., 4.20, 4.30 a.m. It's like, come on. Let's just get it over with. I feel like we all have a little less patience at 4 a.m. than we have at 8 p.m. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I feel like, you know, if there's so if there's someone out there that's gonna like kind of like make things smoother on that near bubble process, the GG. They they're gonna they're gonna throw some curveball out there. Watch. I'm just thinking, or some kind of thing to just speed things up because, especially high rollers, they play really slow, like three, mm-hmm. four from the money because they want to like minimize the amount of hands played. Try to make it to their advantage. Okay, let's look. Tens, kings. Goodbye, Daniel. Yeah, I think I can understand Daniel. that he folded uh, the sixes, but uh, tens, I'd be kind of sad to to fold, especially because this hasn't really been the the twenty two minutes of Daniel the Forest yet either, right? It's just been hard for him to really get a lot going. I don't see how you get away here. It's tough too because it's the guy Isaac Haxton, who you know. He's capable of moves here. Marius here, Ace Jack gets a little easy getaway. He does. Oh man, can can he get away from this, Brody? Is that is it? And it's plus the two I would ju- players. They they are not fold. They don't fold. No. You know? If I'm da- if I'm Daniel here, I'm always jamming, and Daniel jams. I don't think we can really fold him for it. You know, like tens is it, tens is the cutoff point. Nines I'm not that fond of, but tens. It's so hard to fall tens. Unfortunately, he's running into the kings of Isaac. Can Daniel the Forest find one of the last two tens? He got close. It was the wrong color. And that means Daniel the Forest will be eliminated in ninth place. Does still get $41,000. It's uh, gross. It's a setup. Nothing that Daniel the Forest could really do there, I think. Two pay jumps for those little short sacks out there, plus the Chinese guy on the mm-hmm. right. They're, they're loving it. They're like, okay, I don't care who it's. I just want someone to bust. They got it. Like one of the guys I didn't expect to bust first too. Isaac. Though. No, I mean Daniel came in uh, with a reasonable amount of chips. Uh, he came in so, six. Came in with nine hundred and forty. Yeah, nine hundred forty-five thousand twenty-seven big blinds. Yeah, not too bad. 
Someone's got. But I mean, go kudos. Out. Like, yeah, obviously, a someone's gonna go and b like Daniel Devoras is not the guy who wants to lock up seventh place. You know, he does not play all Sunday to then lock up seventh place on on a Tuesday. The man is here to win it. You don't get a four million score on your profile by knitting it up. <laughs> He's not gonna sit there and fall tense because Mari is in who's whom he are short. You know, <laughs> this is not who Daniel Devoras is, and we appreciate him for it. Just sometimes you get unlucky. He's like, man, those guys are going to wait me out so far. I'll be down to like 500K by the time one of them yeah. gets it all in. So he's like, yeah. So, but Isaac, uh, I don't know how he does it, but um, <laughs> just seems to always get paid off when he gets aces and kings. I remember this in like the previous tournaments he, he's uh, done in our Super Millions too. So, yeah. It's nice that sometimes the pros can make the game look easy though. You know, like, honestly, I would like to see, you know, Limitless and Isaac Haxon play a little heads up in, in today's tournament. You know, I know it's not a knock on, other, on any of the MTT guys, but those guys, those are cash game roots there. Whenever I think of Isaac Haxon now, I just think of, like, the random fallout he had with Doc Pork like, a couple of weeks ago on Twitter. And, like, I, I like both of them, and I've been following both of them for a while, so I think it's like a little bit like, in a way, it's like uncomfortable for me to read it because I was like, oh no, I don't, I don't want to think any less of either of them. I don't want to pick a side here either. This is so random. I, like, I remember Doc you Borg mentioned this to me, but who, who was on, who was in the wrong in end, Roddy? Did you pick a side? Well, I, I think the point that Doc made wasn't like super wrong. I don't think you really had to attack him for it. But then Doc just got a bit weird. He got a bit out of line where he's like, yeah, you smoke cigarettes. And I'm like, okay, first of all, that has nothing to do with it. Then Isaac actually is like, mate, I smoke like one pack of cigarettes a year. Like, why, why the hell is this relevant? And I'm like, yeah, that's not relevant at all, Doc. It was, oh, it's just another day on Twitter, mate. Let's keep it at that. Oh, 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 pocket for, hey, your guy he might get to play it there's one ford left though but it is a free roll for you technically yeah if we're closing the action it'd be criminal i think not to especially if he's been watching the show before one out baby what what oh, oh my god I, 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 okay he's definitely chinese because eight is lucky and fours are unlucky in chinese death right? hand. it's a death yeah. hand it means death and there's pocket eights but yeah no 100 percent. he's definitely chinese 100 percent he snap folded because I think that's a spot where if you're gonna fold, you need to think about it a little bit. Yeah. Oh my god! No, Crazy. that man hates force. Just got a little bit blurry for me. I don't know if nah. it's uh, we're don't all worry. having. You're you're sound. You're looking good, sounding good. Don't worry about that. Um, wow, that's a crazy fold. All right, we're good again. My my video got real small. I don't know what the hell just happened. <laughs> Ace nine for Fiesta Pagana. Isaac Haxton has ace ten. I mean, I know that he's short and everything. You can say maybe he doesn't have the stack size to set mine, but it's not even about sets, right? Because a flop like deuce three five, you can also fully send it, uh, or like can, uh, even a you bit can lower fully than send that. Send it on a, on a lot of wards, to be honest, yeah. uh, because you're so short. Mm -hmm. um, I thought, yeah, interesting. Uh, well, look, he's satellite in, so let's not give him too too much. Oh, we're not giving him uh, crap at all. It's just funny. I mean, it is my hand, to be honest. If I'm going to give anyone crap, it's definitely... I gave Ben crap for folding force, and he would have flopped quads. <laughs> Limitless, limp and they say it's suited. This, you know, this Chinese guy, he has been getting involved a little bit. I think he, you said he, earlier he defended like 5-4 offsuit or something, right? So, mm -hmm. not scared, Ben. This is a Actually, a really good flop for both players in a blind versus blind limp spot. Yep. Backdoor flush draw, obviously, for our BBWW. Meanwhile, Limitless flopping top pair. And even Chex, he's like not making it seem like he's got an ace at all. And Limitless, I would also never give kudos for an ace here. If I'm King 9 and it's Limitless who attacked me from the small blind, I'd be like, I've got the nuts here, okay? I've got mid pair, I've got backdoors. Doesn't get better than this against uh, Mr. Malinowski. Yeah, he's a uh, limitless. Is one of those guys that are like when he has a hand, he gets paid off because he's just. And then when he plays them tricky too, you know, he's even more likely to get it paid off. I think. Um, still think that another bet goes in somewhere, and it could be like at least 150k. I think. Yeah, I'd say one 140. 140 is like Same an difference. amount. That 
<laughs> but uh, uh, point is, I, I'm just saying, there's definitely a bet in a call coming in here. I, there's no way King Nine could ever fold. Limitless going a little bit smaller than that. King Nine does indeed make the call, and Limitless gets paid. He's back to 2.3 million. That is uh, a little bit, actually, quite a bit more than what he started with. Came into the final table with 1.8. So pretty solid first hour for Limitless, who's also not been doing anything too well, not getting out of line. Yeah, actually, I think Limitless got a lot of gears, which is um, obviously a, a good thing to have as a player. You know, he can play tight, he can play aggressive, um, and he always gets credit. You think the Deuce Ace is going for it against the Satellite winner? I don't know, he but is. I gotta say, I think it's crazy that our Satellite winner is trying to play Queen Deuce offside in the small blind against uh, Ben CB. If I think of spots and hands that I want to play, I don't think I really want to get involved at all with Queen Deuce. But uh oh, Marius Gius and maybe tempted here. I see. No, okay, he's not. God dang it! I wanted my <laughs> kings in the big line. That's a steal. Let's see what Fiesta decides to do. He's gonna bump it up to one forty. I still. Uh, I don't know if there's like. Issues on the yeah, call. I got, a, I, got a, I got a little frozen thing. Those you are blurry screen a little bit too. Just now. yeah, I think it's uh, the program that we're using. It's not necessarily me or you. Uh, who's who? Me decides to just go for it with King Jack of Clubs. If Fiesta Pagana makes this call, he's actually getting it in pretty good. He does wow. make the call. Ace five is ahead. That's pretty adventurous with Isaac Haxton still in the big blind too. Let's see if there is some justice in this world. That's a pretty good flop for Ace Five. All he needs to do is avoid kings and jacks, and if he does, we are down to seven. That's not a king yeah. or a jack, so we are down. That's what you get for folding pocket fours, man. I'm sorry, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny, Roddy. Um, wow, no, that's a pretty big call there. I think in the small blind, six big yeah. blinds. Um, I agree. A lot of guys just toss it away, especially. We see the guy's been kind of tight. So, Marius is like, okay, the shortest guy is out. I'm ready to play my Queen Jacks now. Yep. He's like, now it's my time. And he does actually pick up the blind, so that's nice. Marius was a real survivor last week. At no point did he have a monster stack, but he hung in there for a long time. Jackson sevens, and it's King Jack that's going to open things up under the gun. I mean, sevens was definitely the hand of the pre show. Yeah, but well, one seven and one jack are dead. Don't think we're seeing too many sets coming up. Look at bet. This is a small three bet. It's like it's really tiny, especially against Limitless and their stack sizes. But Limitless has got one of those hands where it's really hard to call a three bet out of position, even for this sizing. It's it's just such yeah. a bad hand. Probably one of the weaker openings he's going to have under the gun. Let's it go. Not quite the fireworks I was hoping for. King 10 against Jack 10 suited. What if Adrian Mateus falls? Marius gives a gem. So you think Limitless yeah. makes this call? Yeah, 100%. Like it's. Wow. That's He's going to get it in good. So. King 10. Yep. Getting real good. Even has the King of Spades as well. Let's see if Limitless can get lucky. Seems like he does, but he needs to avoid a lot of cards. Aces, Kings, and Nines. Limitless is praying for something low. A deuce, three, four, five. All of that is good. That's an ace or a deuce. It's a deuce. And that means Limitless sucks out on Marius Giesa. Just when I said that the man is a survivor, he is actually going to bust in a seven place. And we're down to six. Down to six, but all of our favorite players are still in. I like it. I, you needed to get a little bit more shorter handed for the, such the cool hands to come, right? Um, I don't know. But uh, ace five, ace five, solver versus solver, and one solver is the stronger hand right now on this board. It's actually a lovely flop for Fiesta. Flops the gut shot, not flush draw. Doesn't get much better than that. He fires out some nice size bets too. Like it's a scary guy to play against. He's he's playing the chip lead, like uh, mm -hmm. put some pressure on. He's playing real solid so far. Definitely with you on that one. I mean, you look at this line and you look around, you're like, my goodness, mate. It's like our five-star players and then the guy who loves Brutoir. I don't know if he knows what Brutoir is, but we're just going to assume he does. Uh, and I got to say, for our chip leader, it's, I don't want to say smooth sailing, but damn, 
He's been doing real well, man. He came in with 3.5 million and he's just been extending the lead over the rest of the table, 4.7 million now. And uh, he's done it deservedly so. Yeah, and he's actually had kind of, he's played the most spots, but it's actually yeah. tough, some tough spots too. So so not easy. But, um, you know, Mateos, he's got three pay jumps already. That, that's got to feel like a big win. For the well, guy he's not playing in. for the pay jumps. Mate. But yeah, we but put for money the guy on who comes in at last... Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. He's your biggest play. He is. King Jack. What did Tony G say, though? Well, something that who's whom he should have kept in mind when he decided to open rip the King Jack. Well, ben Man. does get him to fall once more. I'm the feeling that I, I, Y, Y, B, B, W is starting to get a little bit annoyed about Ben CB because it's like the third time in a row he tries to play a hand and Ben CB just shuts him down. Is that... okay. My stream got very blurry, and I thought it was kings for Ben, but then it wasn't. Fiesta Pagana, oh, has an ace king. And for a split second there, I was like, are those queens? But no queens. I'm seeing a little bit of pause. I'm just going to be quiet for a second. Yeah, I, I'm in the same boat. I think you and I are experiencing the same issues. Limitless decided to open, got three bad by our chip leader, who's closing in on five million chippies. Mr. Pagana is playing one hell of a final table so far. We have Ben opening things up. Nananoko is going to give it a second. I have a feeling that I'm probably also cutting up. Damn it, guys. I was like, I'm not in Sweden anymore. This is going to be great. Sick final table, no tech issues. Now we are having some tech issues at home. Ben does outflop Fiesta Pagana. As it's Ben who flops mid pair and Fiesta Pagana flops absolutely nothing. And I'm waiting for Nana Noko to sort out his technology. I'm going to take a look at football too. <laughs> Semi finals. Nana Noko has no idea that it's happening, but it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Is Pagana the stream goes, okay uh, for you right now, Rowdy? It's okay for you or no? It was uh, very rough for two minutes. It was very hard to see what was actually happening, but it's starting to look a bit better now. All right. Did my guy win the hand? I think he's got ace jack suited. I can't tell. No, your your guy has a seven of diamonds, and <laughs> okay. unless he bluffs Ben CB here, oh. he's not going to win the hand. All right. No, I see it now. It's clear. God. He gives up a pretty decent pot here for Ben. Nine big blinds. Means that Ben is over 3 million. And that is slightly more than what he started his final table with too. So not too bad. Adrian Mateus, king nine. 11 big blinds. Does decide to open things up. It's a big steal right there for that stack. Nice. Um, ben CB, like... He's so solid, man. Ace Jack. Oh no. Ace Jack, Ace Queen. But um, given the stacks positions, gonna go straight to post, I'm pretty sure. No, no three bet happening, that's my expectation. Hmm. You are correct. Ben will just make the call from the big blind with ace queen and doesn't flop a whole lot. Neither does Fiesta Pagana, of course. Yeah, kind of a Kind of a not so great flop for both players, but they got like some not best backdoors. And it's a big bet. I don't know if Ace Queen can make a call here. Wow. Fiesta Pagana, mate. A man on a mission, a man on fire. This is such a tough field, and he's looking real good as he picks up Queens and Ben C B has pocket eights. It's gonna be limitless who open things up with Queen 10 offsuit. Ooh. Well. Fiesta Pagana is going to 3 bet. The question is, how big will he make it? Oh, no, it's Ben who goes for the big 3 bet with H. Does not just want to call from the small blind. Uh, I mean, queens are queens, right? 1.3 million, and let's go. <laughs> and play, you know, it's also got the free roll in the sense that, not free roll, but if I lose, I still got 2 million chips, right? So, yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, Ben loses 400k here. Just don't really see how this... Ends up any way besides Fiesta jamming. Fiesta does just open, rip it. Ben is forced to let it go. 
The rich get richer. 5.4 million chips for the man who came in as a chip leader, but I thought it was going to be very hard to hold on to it. I was like, yeah, you know, 3.5 million chips, but if he loses a couple, he's going to be down to 3 million. And the fact that he came in as chip leader doesn't mean much. He's playing phenomenal so far. Obviously, you know, a couple of easy spots there towards the end. Yeah. As uh, a Chinese player had enough of trying to see flops and not seeing flops, so he just jams the nines. But uh, yeah. what a first hour for Fiesta Pagana. Yeah, it's, it's been a good first hour too, right? Three bus tests. Oh my God. Queens. What is this? Wait, the worst hand is opening. Nice, Limitless. We've got Ace Jack suit, <laughs> which will probably three bet jam. Yep. yep. I mean, he just jumped way worse than Ace Jack. Oh, he oh, calls. He calls. Wow. That's ben is the one with queens. This is actually where this is different for the tens in my opinion. Like earlier, I feel like the tens was always going to be a call, but this is an under the gun open and an under the gun plus one call. And now you've got Ben CB who doesn't get two out of line in general from uh, the cutoff. Raising right, it up. I mean, it's it's not yeah. an easy spot because I can see tens sometimes Jam. jamming here for sure. It's yeah. forty bigs. If he thinks his opponent and his opponent just three bet folded. Next wow. the lay down, Ice. nice. Isaac Haxon, that's amazing. I, but I do like it. Like I can actually get behind this one a little bit more than I can get. Like Daniel was just, I think, forced to call. That was just unlucky. But I think this is very different, right? With the amount of action that's happening before you. Well done, Isaac Haxon. That's sick. Yeah, it is pretty sick. And somehow these two still got some action in there, though. I, I thought there was a chance maybe the limitless, I mean, the Chinese guy gets away. Um, trying to bait him with the 3.5 yeah. big line three. See that? The guy has nothing. He's out. Still some nope. decent action for the two queens, though. I thought there was a chance in the world he just gets nothing. That would have been terrible. No, he, he, he got some chippies out of it. Yeah. Fiesta nice. Pagana is. Very rich. The man still has over a hundred big blinds, by the way, Nanonoko. You're not supposed to have a hundred big blinds 41 minutes into a show. It's not yeah, allowed. Blinds go up, you know, like you yeah, just yeah. naturally go down. You do, you do not have to average hundred big blinds throughout this final table, Fiesta Pagana. Yeah, it's a, it's a good dynamic. I actually like the way that the chip stacks are dispersed too, right? Like it's three really strong players, but they don't have... They don't have the chip lead, so you know, like you like to see how they maneuver against guys with big stacks. Adrian Mateas goes for a very tiny bet. Limitless does flop bottom pair, makes the call, picks up the nine high flush draw, which is slightly better than the eight high flush draw. I would almost say if I'm Adrian Mateas here, I might just jump and like get it over with. I mean your hands strong enough, I think it's fine just to bet. Cause you got the eight of hearts for a little backup. I think if we had queen yeah. eight off, no heart, I can see, I can definitely, I like jamming more, protect that pot here. It's like, well, if he gets there, oh, well. What will limitless do for the three big blind bet of Adrian Mateus here on the turn? Let's it nice go. Bros. Yep. It sets some discipline. Cause you know, like you're, you improved a little bit, not a big bet, but it was the right fold. Yeah, but it's like one of these improvements that could also mean you're dead. Oh, for sure. <laughs> always in play. You're always drawing dead in this game. Seems like we were not the only one having some internet issues. Fiesta Pagana, our chip leader. Eight, a three. I got to say, I've been really impressed by the mannerisms that we've seen over the last year whenever there was a player with internet connections issues at these final tables. Obviously, this being broadcasted, so maybe that's like a bit more tempting for people to share their good side. But I feel like the high-level guys in general, they are ultra nice, and they will wait. They will burn some of their time bank and give people uh, time to reconnect. It seems like it's not just Fiesta Pagana. It seems like it's Isaac Haxon, too. It's been uh, pretty inspiring to see. I agree. Um, you know, you play with these guys regularly, like 10Ks every other day or whatever, you know, you got to have some respect for the game. So it makes sense to kind of just time. Give I, guys um, some time. I got to yeah. admit, mate, in the one, two streets, if someone is disconnecting, they will immediately fire that one big blind bet when you're not back in time. I, I, I know, I know people do that for sure. I mean, like, to be fair, before I ever watch this, I've done that too. Cause I just, I was like, well, that's not my fault that he disconnects. Like, 
you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I was like, he would yeah. do the same thing against me. But then I watch these guys. I'm like, oh, wow. They're actually so so nice. They show so much respect. As a limitless shows a little bit less respect here, and gems the jack do suited from the small blind takes it down. Seems like all our players are back though. Ace jack, ace jack, ace eight suited. A little bit interesting actually, because um, I, I think from Adrian it's a standard three bet jam for fifteen bigs. But to call fifteen bigs of ace jack yourself, it's not an easy play to do. So I'm curious to see what Fiesta does. Like... Yep. Especially because this is happening over the under the gun opening as well. Mm -hmm. It does feel like if you call off here with Ace Jack, best case scenario is that you're flipping. You don't think you're ever really dominating your opponent. Uh, I certainly agree with that. It does make the call. Adrian Mateus is going to look at this and be like, huh. Any spades? A heart for a sweat? Oh, no sweats today. Why is Ben hitting us with the so sick? What did you fault, Benjamin? I'll tell you, Fiesta has not missed a spot yet today. No? Um, like, a lot of, I think a lot of guys would fault there, though, to be honest. Oh, <laughs> pocket force. But he's probably not going to play it. Chinese players Chinese. don't like pocket. <laughs> they don't love pocket force the way that I love pocket force. Yeah, and then the hands he's up against too. Like the only way you see this flop is he just like you know what? Let me just try to set mine here. Although he can't. He's we'll probably gonna to see. see a flop though. Yeah. Yeah. I, hmm. I that's like there's one time to see a four. It was that one. Yeah, because nobody had a four, I know. Uh, sick, this is actually an interesting flop. I mean, Fiesta Pagana flops two overs in the open ender. Limitless also flops the open ender, but he flops the bottom end of it. So what he's looking for is the five. Oh. That's actually a pretty uh, spicy turn. You know what's really funny is that Pocket Force would have still been ahead, but would have to avoid three million cards on the river. <laughs> yeah, that'd be tough three-way. But anyways, um, this is still going to be very tricky. I think Fiesta, of course, is going to bet here once he sees the weakness, going for a big bet, trying to get those ace highs to fold, king highs, those little pocket pairs. We know Limitless is not folding, and there could still be a lot of fireworks on there on a lot of river cards, man. Ooh. Pocket force, mate. Should have jumped. Can you wow. believe that, actually? Like, imagine if this would have gone three-way to the river. How the hell okay, did right. pocket force actually <laughs> manage to be the best you're hand? Fo you're focused on a hand that's not even involved in the hand, Roddy. But we got two high card hands battling here. And if one guy, if Fiesta doesn't bet, he loses his pot, right? Because Limitless is going to bet for sure. He's got seven high. Limitless needs to bet. Doesn't even need to be big. I'd love to see him just fire like 280 or 310. Like, don't make it hurt too much. Wow. Yeah, that's really tiny, but there's nothing that Fiesta Fagana can do. That's sick. Very, very well done by Limitless. I bet he's real surprised. And the moment that his opponent did fall that quickly, he's like, oh, yeah, you had a check 10 there or something, mate. Because that's like almost the only thing that really makes sense. Well yeah. done by Limitless. That's a big one for him. Dude, Roddy's here talking about pocket fours. And, we, you know, like, who pocket fours folded a mile uh, hours ago, Roddy? God. <laughs> you trying to trigger me today? You're doing it. <laughs> mate, I'm not trying to do anything. You should see yourself when there is a pocket fives, okay? <laughs> it's coming. Uh, do you think today today will happen? One of us? Just I'm not saying who, yeah. but just one of us. Yes. Yes. I think so. Maybe because GG, they put a little promo out there. That's why. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, I don't think we were, we're going to get one today. <laughs> uh, sick hand by Limitless. Well done. And Fiesta Pagana finally takes some damage. Isaac Haxon sticks around with his bottom pair here. And obviously he had he saw the back door. He's like, I've got the ace of clubs. Not yeah, doing sure. too much for him. I, just, I, I like that last hand. Like I think um it's a good good final six right now. A little check. I I love how small the bet was, but then yeah, if you have checked in. There's still nothing you can do. Do you think there's a world where you could pick up on weakness and actually bet bigger? Check race. <laughs> not, not, not on that board texture. It's pretty crazy. Um, but, you know, Limitless, his tiny bet there was designed to fold out all of the draws that miss. 
because the way it ran out, like, well, if my opponent has a pair, he's not folding anyways. But he's not going to call me with queen high, jack high, king high, all sorts of types of hands. So it was really a perfect size bet because the hands that were going to call him would have called a, a bigger bet anyways. So, and then the bluff, like he gets to get fold out all those high card hands with a smaller bet. You might as well take the smaller bet for a better price. Wouldn't be surprised to see a stand just jam. And that is exactly what happened. Don't think he's going to face any resistance. The rest of the table doesn't have too much. This is, uh, it's actually kind of funny how Ben is very similar to the stack that he started with as Isaac Haxton picks up aces. That was Isaac. Oh, Fiesta Pagana is the one opening things up. Probably won't get too much action here on the aces though, right? I don't think so. Um, Isaac did three bet Pagana earlier of aces, didn't get action. Pagana always has suited low cards for some reason. This chip leader, he likes to fight. This is I a might, tough one to play. You're I'd saying? be tempted to call with four or five of hearts here because like A, he's got so many big blinds. He's still sitting at 100. And then B, these are the kind of hands that you can get paid off in a very big way because when you hit the board, and you're going to hit it in a big way and your opponent won't connect anywhere near you. But Fiesta lets it go, does not want to give Isaac Hexen any more chippies than he already has. I guess there's a solid argument to be made for that. Yeah. It's hard to play five four suit out of position though. Like and yes, you can make hands out quite disguised, but uh it is five four suited after all. He's five suited. Pocket deuces. Deuces on the big blind, but there is a deuce dead. It's a good spot to, to pick up a little the big blind's like the best spot, right? Because you get the best price to see a flop. Close the action. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if we don't see a flop here with the deuces. Also be very surprised if we see them flop a set after one of the deuces got folded. Let's we'll see board. if Isaac Hexen wants to see bet because that is a pretty ugly flop for his hand. I agree. That gets a little bit better, but still not amazing for for either player. The snap check by Ben. Whole counterfeited. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no, I, I think, think Isaac stand. looks at Mr. Haxton looks at his hand, is like, I think I like it. <laughs> Ace high is pretty good on this board. Maybe Ben wants to fire like a little over bet, like 300k. He's like, you know, I gotta win it, bet to win. Um, I think it'd be unnecessary. So. Isaac Hexen is going to value bet. <laughs> yeah, we'll right. check it down. We'll see if the Neil's at ace high. is good. Then got a bit unlucky there. It happens a lot, though, with like deuces and threes. Like fours, I don't worry about it because most of the time you just make a full house anyway. But deuces and threes, they do get counterfeited very often. I didn't realize how much pocket deuces is counterfeited. Like, like they just get destroyed when you Everything. see five cards. It's the worst. Ace Jack versus Ace Eight. Not the flop that should give us too many fireworks, but I also have the feeling that Fiesta Pagana doesn't want to let too many more go. He's on technically a very tiny downswing now because he was at 5.5 million chippies before. He's been losing a little bit. It's a funny uh, turn card. The nine of spades rolls off, means that Pagana now has an eight high flush draw. Yeah, he's got the ace high. I think Limitless with this type of hand would love to kind of try to get the showdown. Spades get there. It's not much, but it's still an eight high flush. And I do feel that if Limitless had something better than that, he probably would have bet at this point. So I think Fiesta just hoping his opponent just decides to go for a random shot on a scary board. It's... He is going to yeah, take the call. bait. Yeah, that's a 100% that is, call. That is an uh, easy call for Mr. Pagana. And Limitless will receive the bad news that he lost to a worst hand and a hand that perhaps should not have seen a river. Queens for our Chinese player, but don't think he's going to get anything. Like, I actually don't mind jamming here because I feel raising of 
the uh, 12 big blinds. It looks so powerful. Like it really does look very powerful. So I almost prefer jamming and just hoping that you get a, a bit of a looser curve, an ace 10 or anything along those lines. Yeah, I definitely see what you're saying for sure. Well, you never know. Let them figure it out. Maybe they think you're a satellite player. You, you, you know, you, you think you can raise like an ace 10. But Fiesta is taking a little time here. This is a, a, a jack eight offsuit. He's three, oh, it's taking it the works. bait. The meme of soccer to casting whereas, oh my God, it works. It actually does, but he will not pay off extra. He's like, no, I'm not even going to pay off the extra four. Okay, you clearly have a very good hand. He's kind of got snap jam there too. Well, I mean, that's still lovely Niels for a YYBBW. W, second one. Uh, he just got gets. way more than he was supposed to see and he didn't even have to see a flop. Yeah, it's funny. Like the one time you talk about Jabby, like he, it actually worked out him in raising. But I agree. I know what you're saying, Roddy. I definitely can get behind it. But wow, Fiesta just went for it with pure garbage in a spot where his opponent looked strong. It was strong. Jack three versus three seven. This is going to be the final hand of our first hour. I don't know if we're still broadcasting this on Twitch or YouTube, but or excuse me. Uh, but sometimes we do this on Twitch and Facebook, and then the second hour will only be over at YouTube. So make sure to check out ggpoker.tv or just find GG Poker over at YouTube. That's going to do it. We're still left with six players and five of our six favorites that we were hyping up in the pre-show. They're still in it. I really think we have an amazing night of poker ahead of us. Hopefully you guys are having fun. We're going to take a quick break and we'll see you in four minutes and 30 seconds. Hello, everybody. Daniel Granu here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations. You know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus Kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's gonna fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flop the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see, in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry, you don't even have to lift a finger. First, simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop up window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future, so keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back, everyone, to the second hour of week three of season two, where all our fan favorites are still alive, where the picks are still alive. And we've had a chip leader who's honestly played a mighty fine first hour. We didn't know as much about him as some of these other guys, but Nanonoko, safe to say that he weathered the storm of the first hour in an excellent way. Yeah, it's been a good first hour for sure. Um, you know, the first two seasons, we had new names ship it this season, this episode, and not first two seasons, first two episodes. And new guys ship it, right? This episode, I don't think that's going to happen. Or, why not? It could be. Fiesta Pagana. I was going to say, it's not going to be the Chinese guy, but I just forgot about Fiesta Pagana here. But here we go. Six-handed. Three bust outs pretty good for, pretty quick for a first hour, too. Yeah. But those guys were all kind of short. Besides Daniel, I guess Daniel's the only one who had a reasonable amount of big blinds. Just a bit unlucky, bit of a setup. Tens versus Kings. And then it was True. Isaac Haxton as well. I don't think we can really fault Daniel for going out. I am uh, I'm excited to see how things look at the end of the second hour. Because I feel like things are going to change. Obviously, the blinds are going to go up. You guys can always see the blinds go up based on the amount of hands we play. In the top left side, in 15 hands, we will reach another level. Let's see what Ben decides to do with his A6 of diamonds in the big blind. Just makes the call. Flops absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, Isaac Haxton flops top pair. Don't think he's too concerned about the two jacks. I mean, you always will be concerned, but what he's up against, I don't think uh, NCB is putting another chip into this pot. No. A little check back on the flop. Some pot control, Nanonoko? Pretty much. Like, yeah, you've got ace king top pair top kicker, but you know, you got 35, well, 35, 30, almost 40 big blinds. <laughs> You're never looking to get all those to the test. Let's see what Limitless decides to do with one of the ruddy hands. He lets it go. Our Chinese player lets go of king nine on the button. Seems like he's going to cherish his tournament life too for now. Do six offsuit. I mean, I was gonna say the way he's been playing, it seems like he might have raised this one, but I think he's starting to give Ben CB a little bit extra respect. It seems like a nightmare spot for uh, our Chinese player, who is our second shortest stack here. It's like you've got Limitless on the left, on the, and then you've got Ben CB and Fiesta Pagana with monster stacks, Isaac Haxton a bit further away. It's not going to be easy for him. I feel like he's, he's going to have to keep the game simple for himself and just jam the hands that he feels like he should jam. Ben CB once more picks a very unfortunate moment. Earlier, he did it with eights when Fiesta Pagana had queens. This time, he <laughs> does it with nine eights suited. And Fiesta Pagana has queens again. Yeah. Um, well, Fiesta Pagana, like, sure, he's not getting full doubles with queens, but, like, he's picking up a decent amount of chips because of Ben... Mm -hmm. Literally from one guy on the right, and it's always limitless opening the action too. Yeah. So he's gonna action two big blinds. Wow, just calls though. That that spice things up. I don't know if I like this play, but it is gonna work out on this board texture. Yep. I don't know what Ben CB bet though. I don't. Mm. It's tricky because um, if he checks. He looks like he's got ace high. He yeah. just gives up. But Ben is not the kind of guy that I feel like loses a million plus chips when he doesn't really need to. Yeah, I think when he thought, I think when he sees Fiesta begin a smooth call here, he thinks he's got tens, jacks, ace, queen a lot. I don't think he thinks he has queens, but it doesn't really matter on this board. I don't think he thought any of those hands were really going to fold. I think Fiesta needs a bet because it looks like his opponent has ace high. And with that card roll rolling off on a turn, don't give him a free shot. Man, uh, five is not a card you want to see on the river. It would make things really awkward. So he is going to bet and he's going to take it down and he is back to where he once was and that is at 5.5 .5 million. Go to see of Ben CB. Yeah, interesting hand. I thought the pre-flop was not standard for sure. That standard no. was jam. I think you so, think so too, right? Our yeah, four bet, like just proper big. Yeah. Ace nine. He's like, nah, it's a bit too early. No falling for it. I wonder what Adrian Mateus does here if Isaac Min raises. No, Jack three is not exactly the hand you're super keen on opening with, but he does open. 
Can Adrius Mateus find a gem? Sitting up, yep, he does. With 11 big blinds. Well done, Adrian. And he is back to uh, close to 900k chips. He hasn't really been able to get a lot higher than that, but he's still hanging in there. Still has a shot. I mean, like, he's playing He's playing a good short stack today. Uh, mm -hmm. Solid. That was a solid play just there. Like, just knowing his opponents will, will still go for steals. 5-4. Oh, if Limitless wants to be real crazy, like, King 8 suited, it, it can battle. I, I, like, I know your tournament life is precious, but when it's Limitless attacking you from the small blind... I'd be willing to send it, but I do prefer to just go ahead and close your eyes and all in rather than see flops because King 8, it's all, not often going to completely smash the board. And this is one of these nightmare flops you really don't want to see with King 8s of clubs. Yeah, it's, I think pre-flop is uh, it's pretty interesting as a King 8 suited. Wow, he still wow. calls, takes the lead. What? Hey, <laughs> this, as long as you got a game plan, right? This game I... plan is Expected his hand to play out in many ways. I did not expect him to call on that board with King Eight of Clubs. Does make the call and takes the lead when the Eight of Hearts rolls off. Yeah, I think Lim looks a little worried. He's like, "Wow, wow, what is his hand? This hand shouldn't be shouldn't be action, but it, was, it turned out to be pretty funny. Like, All right, mm -hmm. two pairs. I think Limless thinks his opponent has a queen, so I don't expect him to bet too big. I think he's going to go small, even with a hand as strong. He thinks his like opponent's one, satellite 120 in. 120-ish, maybe? Like 145? 180, maybe? Yeah. That's my read, because given how he played the ace-8 last time, he bet kind of small with the top pair. So 180. Here we go. Plays his opponent. I'd be real surprised if our Chinese player decides to call here. It seems impossible. It does seem... Sometimes you get baited by the the less than half pop bet. You're like, yeah, but it's, it's almost more tempting. I feel like to jam than it is to call. Well, jamming would never work. And he's oh! going to take the bait. Wow. There's no way Limitless ever falls for this price. It's almost a min raise. Mm -hmm. And he's got the four of hearts too. A little blocker to the flush. It looks strong. It does really look yeah. really strong. The only problem is it's just so small. You still have two pair here. It is 270k to potentially win 1.4 million. And you've got two pair. Yeah, it's one hell of a crying call. Mm -hmm. You're worried. I'd be very surprised if Limitless falls. Uh, there are obviously like many hands that he would lose to. And if you're looking for the hands that play like this, that would beat you, you're going to find a lot of them. One of the extra things I would think about is I bet a third pot on the river. Does that induce bluffs? I think the answer is yes, a little bit more often than not. So that makes me lean towards a call. Like I'd be more willing to bet fold if I bet a little bit bigger just because oh, it looks like I'm not folding. Here though, like I can see people just randomly spazzing. You tell me my opponent didn't bet the turn for flush. How does he have six seven? He floated the flop. No, that's never happening. No. Like this line makes like if I lose here, I'm losing to like a queen four. Queen. I'm losing. But to I have queens, a four. <laughs> I have a four. You know, he makes the call oh. correctly. Yep, but he's real surprised to see king eight of clubs. He's like, that's one of the last ten. Why did you call on the flop? Well, that's what we are trying to figure out too, but. That's obviously a very painful one for a Chinese player who is now down to less than four big lines. And he's going to jam and Ben is going to call with a7 offsuit. I'd be very surprised if Ben folds here. Ben obviously does not fold. Well, h6 obviously has a decent shot here. He's going to have to hit though. He needs an 8 or a 6. An 8 or a 6 or it is all over for our Chinese player. That could be... No, it's not. Somehow in between. It's the seven of hearts. It's a bit unfortunate. Nananoka, we are down to five. But I think more importantly, we are down to the four really big names and the man who came in as the chip leader. This is honestly... Uh, if you would have asked me, hey, Roddy, if you have five players left, these are the fives that I would have picked that I would have loved to see battle it out. It's uh, yeah, pretty sir, amazing. I agree with you. This is the exact five people. And, you know, they still got some stacks to play with. Um... You know what? That last hand, 
kind of out there for our Chinese oh. guy, but oh, wow, nice flop. But uh, he did satellite in, so GG for that 87k for him. This can get real painful for Ben, man. Okay, now it's going to be a little bit less painful. Now it's a lot easier to fault. I think Fias Vigana has proper triggered about seeing that Ace of Spades roll off. For sure. Come on. Like, the worst. Because, like, he can even lose the hand, too, now. Yeah, to a king of spades. Yeah. So... When he sees the snap checks, I think he's going to bet himself now. Just hope his opponent has, like, nine of spades, two pair or something. Yeah, a strong two pair. And maybe in a, an ace jack, something along those lines. Fiesta is going to go for it, but Ben will let it go real quick. So Ben is just kind of still hovering around where he started. He came into the final table with 2.7 million. He's still playing 2.7 million. You know what's funny as well, Nanaka, is that four of my final table betting uh, players are all four <laughs> still alive. But then the one guy I don't have has all the chips. <laughs> That's why I picked Fiesta Magana to win it, right? Because you picked everyone else. I suspected this scenario would show up. And you're just going to be extra salty when Fiesta Magana ships it, you know? Like, so I like the situation. Surprise Ben doesn't open. I feel like Ben does open uh, the suited 8-7 quite often. Five-handed. But... I think uh, he just felt like he's been getting pain with these 8-9 suited and stuff. He's like, he just had some bad vibes. Different different timing, he definitely would have raised. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. What a flop, though. Limitless flopping the jack-high flush draw and bottom pair. Isaac Haxton has aces and he does have the ace of hearts. Yeah, and that's a board that smashes a big blind. I hey, don't what did Ben fold again? 8-7 so, of hearts, of right? hearts! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that's insane. Oh, wow. And, uh, he could, you know, depending on how Isaac hacks inside, he might decide small to a three pad, and they'd just be playing for stacks for sure. Ben would get a full, full knockout. Yep. So, but he's out. But Limitless still got a big hand. It's not going to fold. Two hearts dead, though. Mm -hmm. Does make it a bit harder, but hey, any jack is good, any four is good. That's going to give him the bonus outs again. There's no way you fold here. The nine doesn't change anything. I want to see a Ben CB stream right now. Just like, what do you yeah. think? <laughs> I want, oh. do you think? I feel like Ben is the kind of guy to show his hand actually here at the end. And then hit us with a little tilt emoji. It's tricky because it's the hand where like, well, do I want to show him I folded this hand preflop too, right? But then you want to show because of the situation. Um, as played though, let's see. Isaac has an easy value bet. And Limitless has an easy fold. I don't think there's a reason to get in too much trouble here. Yeah, it looks strong. Mm -hmm. All right, Ben. Show it. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually like the most annoying run of this well. We're like, okay, yeah, sure. I flopped the nuts and I had a flush draw, but there's a lot of bad cards that could come. And then it's just like the dream run out where you still have the nuts. You know? Yeah. And then you like, you see the action, like, oh, maybe it just checks down to river when there's like, yeah, exactly. It's there. like, it just gets worse. Like they're actually putting in chips too. <laughs> yeah, usually, yep. usually that happens when you make a tight fold of a pocket pair and you hit a set, right? And then you see the yeah. crazy action. You're like, God damn it. Why didn't I go for it? Yeah. And then eventually you see both cards as well. And you're like, oh my God, I had him drawing that. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't get any better. Fiesta Pagana is here with his queen four of clubs. Uh, safe to say that he needs a little miracle to still win this hand. You need to find a queen on the river that was not a diamond. Does not get there. I think Ben could find a value bet with this hand. I think he should expect his opponent to better jack a lot with the positions that run out on the turn. Mm -hmm. so I think the king eight is definitely good, unless he's scared of a pocket nines and tens, which is possible. But this kicker is quite quite strong. The where like say his opponent has like a I don't know an eight, an eight or something, they they probably call. Ben wins a couple Ooh. chippies. Wow, six seven suited pocket eights, pocket sevens, and a six suited. Actually, four reasonable hands here. Yeah, four like not great hands, but not bad hands. Ben CB keeps getting the suited connectors like all day. Six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine. Seems to lose chips of all of them. 
Ooh. Limitless wants three bet, doesn't he? You getting those vibes? He's taking his sweet time. He's got suited ace. He's got button. He hasn't three bet much at all this final table yet. It'll look strong. It's crazy how close that VPIP all is. Well, you were right about the three betting vibes. Then let's go with a six seven real quick. This is super annoying for Fiesta Pagana because you kind of just wanted to see a flop at your pocket eight. So he lets go of arguably That's the nice. best starting hand of the bunch. It's not over though, because Isaac Haxton could make a go. He could jam. He could fold all three options. Very viable. Depends on the situation. Oh He's going to rip it in. Nice. Worst hand wins. Oh, one of the worst hands out there. Mr. Haxton still got it, doesn't he? He may be getting a little older. The years are starting to count, but that man still has it. Yeah. I like the way Isaac Haxton plays. It's super solid. He's not too crazy. And when he makes plays, they seem to always work. And when he gets ace, he's like kings, he always gets doubles up. Aces, he gets he doesn't get as much action, but kings he gets a lot. Big raise here. I think uh, Isaac Haxon's not done. Well, this is not a hand that Fiesta Pagana is ever gonna let go. That is an ugly flop though for the ace queen. So obviously gonna connect with Haxon a little bit more than he's going to connect with him. Two overs. Spade. Yeah, the ace of spades. I was like, if you're wondering whether or not you should see bet, I think then you look at the ace of spades and you're like, I think I can see bet because even if I get called, there should be a lot of reasonable turn cards for me. Yeah, Isaac I think if you're ever skill. debating whether to bet your hand, if you're holding the nut backdoor flush straw, you just lean. Betting usually works out better. Mm -hmm. And with you in Fiesta Pagana now at 5.8 million chips. It also feels that this tourney is just a never ending upswing for him. It's supposed to stop eventually, but that line just keeps going up, Nenonoko. Yeah, he's grinding. And I feel like he's not getting. He's getting some, some easy spots, but in some tough spots too. So it's, it's like a real proper battle today. Queen Jack going for it. Wow. This is a muscle, but it's hard for King 3 Suit to do anything. Yeah, let's see. Even if you have position, that's a it's a very reasonable three bet. It's Over no eight big blinds. Nice. That's the thing. Hacks is so solid. Where when he makes these plays, like you just got to give respect. It's quite similar to Ben C B, where he's so solid, you got to give him respect. Mm -hmm. And even though like once in a blue moon, they end up losing the 300 K or the 350 K in this phase in the tournament, but you don't see them just lose a million for no reason. And I feel like that's the difference between these guys and so many other good players we've had at these final tables where there are some players that just lose a bit more than they should when they were trying to make a move. And I feel like that doesn't really happen to the likes of Haxton and Ben CB very often. I think you call it the I want to win this pot syndrome, right? Like, yeah. it's like I don't, these runouts are pretty bad. Yeah, maybe my all in shove is less than a min raise, but I'm still going to do it because my name is Kote Nikov or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> this poor guy, we're never going to forget about it. Still the most like epic hand I've ever seen, really, at this one of them. Super millions. Mr. Hexen opening things up with King Jack of Hearts. Ben CB does have an ace on the big blind. Calling with ace five does kind of suck though, right? Because there aren't too many great flops. I mean, we all dream of the deuce three four, but never happens. Oh, that's a big three bet as well by Ben. To be fair, if I was like playing against these guys at this point, whenever they're doing this with the big blind, I'm thinking of ace five and ace six and ace four a lot more than I'm thinking of aces and kings. So I'll be yeah. real. It's always the ace five offsuit, man. Like ace five offsuit frequency is like 90%. The other ones are like, okay, if I feel like it, but my gosh, power play here. It's, it's the solver three bet, man. What can I say? It's always from the big blind too. The big blind, the frequency is very high. The small blind is like, if I feel like it. I didn't really mention it yet, but there's also a short deck series currently going on. You guys can see it July 4th to July 11th by the looks of it. I don't actually know who those guys are because I don't wow. play that much short deck and I'm not that involved in the scene. But I looked at it and I'm like, hey, cool, new faces. I was, like, well, was going to ask I you, like, who are those three? I have no idea. I was like hoping you'd give me some insight. 
I actually don't know who they are. I play a little bit of short deck sometimes if I'm bored or if I'm streaming. People are like, hey, well, they gamble it up in short deck. Because for some reason, some of my viewers, they are big short deck degenerates. And they're like, come on, Roddy, let, let, let's gamble a bit. And it's like, all right, well, let's pre-flop all in a whole bunch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, like, you know, you got some friends who fans, right? They, they're, they're interested in poker, but obviously they don't play professionally. Like, that's a good game to start out with. It's a lot simpler. Um, I don't know what that series is like, but are you going to fire like a small one, like a $100 one or $200 one, maybe yeah. one? I mean, to be honest, the short deck tournaments, mate, they're, they're kind of memes. Like, people just jam, jam, jam. As long as they can register... They're jamming. I was like, guys, you know, there's not a cash game. There's no jackpots here, right? We don't have to jam everything, but people be nuts in short deck. You get you get one bullet, right? You don't get to like you have to rebuy to to get another stack because the way they did it at the Triton, the big st uh, because it's a big buy-in, they mm -hmm. split your uh, your buy-in into two, three bullets basically mm -hmm. to kind of reduce the variance a little more. I mean, those tournaments do exist as well in GG, and I actually thought they were really fun. Poor Ben, by the way, it's going to open again. And it <laughs> seems like every single time that Ben opened, I have no idea how Ben still has more chips than he started the night with. Because it feels like seven times he has opened and Fiesta Pagana had a monster. Queens, Queens, Jacks this time. Uh, yeah, Ben once more, not stubborn, does not get carried away. Yeah, Ben, uh, but like, if whole cards were down, I think Ben CB would be very suspicious at this point. But yeah. Fiesta has actually picked up a hand every single time. Queens and Jacks, uh, pretty much exactly. So I w he would probably it's like, oh, I don't feel too bad at at the moment. So the other four, basically my four final table betting picks, they have a combined stack of, let's say, 7.4 million chips. But Fiesta Pagana has 6.1 million by himself. Now, if Ben makes this call, though, it's hard, I guess, with ace-jack. This is real close, but I actually think he's going to make the call. I think so, too. Um, he's up against a guy who will reshove worse and a lot of flips. Mm -hmm. A lot of flips. He's always guy shoving 10 big blinds. You got a big blind anti-overlay. Yeah. And it's not too bad on your stack if you call and lose. You got 40 bigs. I think this is... I think it's sure. a call, and Ben agrees with us. He does make the call. He will see if the Niels it. This is probably the best hand he could have gone up against. He now needs to avoid kings, though. He needs to avoid kings and eights as Adrian Mateus turns an open ender. Mm, that could be an no. eight. No, it's not an eight. The six <laughs> of diamonds is here, safe. Man. What? I don't think it could be eight, can it? Like, it's the same thing as the nine, as the nine without the middle, I think. No, I could be I wrong. I think the eight has the two dots in the center, no? Two you pips. know what? Now you're questioning me. I'm not too sure. No, I don't know. I think only nines and tens have the four pips, but I actually I use a different. I use the full four color decks, and not this one. Sometimes I trip up a little bit there. All right, one year bets are down, but I guess technically, a lot of them will go down eventually. <laughs> I'm bl I blame Elky for that. It's all good. Now Elky owes me dinner. He doesn't know that this was part of the deal, but totally was. <laughs> hey. But you know what's funny? If you had went with the guy I told you to pick, look what place he got. First yeah, one Daniel out. DeForest, he went out real quick. So Elky definitely outdoing you, but I'm not surprised because I think everyone is outdoing you. Never look. <laughs> uh, but uh, look, if we had to eliminate one of the five guys, that's the one I would eliminate for an action pack final four. Um, here, anything can happen. Limitless down to one. How's he down to 1.3? What happened to him? Jack Forsuit, right. I guess, took some chips, but it's not mm -hmm. his fault. Well, he's going to make a play with the Ben CB powerhouse. I don't think uh, Hexen is ever folding for this price. Makes the call. Flop strip tens. Uh-oh. And Limitless does suffer a little bit from the I want to win this pot syndrome. So this could become real bad, Nanonoka. Yeah. Having raised pre-flop, it's actually a really good board to put a little bet, even a quarter pot. You just take it down a lot. You start checking. You kind of look like what you got. He does check. Uh, well, at least he turns the open ender. And he does actually, uh, I guess, have a lot of ace kings in his range. But Yeah, he does. A decent amount. Um, stacks doesn't really... Pretty shallow. Accent checks. Just hoping his opponent either stabs or actually hits that piece. I can see limitless betting. I think he can. He needs to bet like 
it's not gonna work, but he would want to bet a size that could maybe get some like ace highs to fold. You know, like an ace rag. Oh, he checks. Does make a pair of sixes on the river, but I think Limitless knows that that is almost never, ever, ever good here. Unless his opponent was playing pocket fives. <laughs> Haxton Seven. here, I think, will value bet. I think he's just gonna. It looks like his opponent's checking down. Mm hmm. He might go reasonable, yeah. Yeah. Slightly more than half pot. Don't really see Limitless making any plays here. Yeah. It's always annoying when you check down and you got like a you you make a hand, because sometimes they're trying to move you off of ace high. I mean, we saw Limitless make a king eye call, remember in the past, but good fold there. Mm -hmm. Well done. This guy's just too solid though, Haxton. Only wins. I and mean, making that call would have a real Serious impact no. on Limitless. His stack as our chip leader picks oh, up no, pocket no. fours. No. Fold. We're Fold, gonna, Ben. We're, we're, Queen we're eight is not a flop. A... Oh, Ooh, you're lucky, mate. You are lucky. <laughs> that was a good spot for you, for sure. I know. Close the action. Oh, man. We might see a turn. Ben is not folding mid pair here. You free roll. You see the turn. We might even see a river. Check, check. <laughs> For sure, oh man, five percent. Pocket fours always make a set unless they don't need to make a set, but now they kind of do. So the funny thing is that I'm torn because I've got Ben at final table betting. So I'm like, ah, oh, yes, I want a set, but no, I don't want Ben to lose too many chips. But Ben wouldn't lose too many chips anyway with yeah, just a true. pair of eights. You'd be better off having the set hit just because, like, yeah, two big blinds. Mm. Yes, the big guy. Knows his hand is dead, but decides to give up, thinking you know, his opponent's going to look him up anyways. This is where Ben mumbles to himself. See, Roddy, they never make a set. Oh, come on, Ben. Give me a break. <laughs> I, you know, there is a chance he mentions your name in that hand. I don't know why. Just get this feeling. He knows I love the pocket force. Yeah, he does. 10 8 offsuit versus 9 5. 9 5 does make mid pair. Let's see Pagana sprinkle some chips down there. It's like with weak pairs and blind versus blind, you kind of don't want to give your opponent a free shot at uh, seeing a turn card even when they're just going to snap fold. Ooh. Oh, Ben could open here. If yes, Pagana is still our dominant chip leader. So he may be feeling a little feisty and put in a little three bet. And not a little three bet. He's going to put in a big three bet, I feel like. Okay, just calls. Could have did, he could have made it like 600k for sure. Oh, just one turn to end it all for Ben CB. Yeah. And that that turn mate. would not be a heart, too. Could be a river. As played, I think Fiesta Begana bets his turn. Um, and Ben calls. Yeah, it's a it's a type of tur uh, flop where Fiesta, I mean. Hey, look, Fiesta got king queens a lot, ace queens, you know, queen jacks. Uh, his opponent's going to have ace highs a lot, pocket eights, pocket sevens. So wow, big bet, but still going to get looked up. Yeah, with only a single over, and then Ben obviously will think that. I don't he think Ben's blocks. going anywhere. No. It is, it is a bit annoying when they bet this big, because that almost makes it seem like they want to make up for the chips that didn't go in on the flop. It's like, hey, why didn't you hmm. see bet? So they're making up for some uh, lost rates, but with only a single over, Jack's here on the button. I do think you got a call. Uh, the more he thinks, though, it's worse for him, right? Ooh. Oh, wow, he folds the best hand. Oh, man. I think that the fact that he took a little bit longer made him think, man, if I call now, I look like my hands face up, and then he makes a move on me on the river. And he's like, all right, I'm out. But that's the thing. Fiesta Pagana, he, he sizes up more than all the other guys out here. And it's quite mm -hmm. scary to play against because, yeah, sure, you lose more when you're wrong. But, man, if you can get hands like that to fold, no bets post flop, really. It's, uh, it seems like a good reward to me. 6.2 million though. chips for a chip leader. He is going to lose a couple here to Limitless, who just gets it all in with the ace king. Pocket oh, fours, but one of the fours is dead. Oh no. I think Limitless will jam this. He looks at it around the table. It's like clear shorts. Oh, he folds. No, you get another free row run. 
Oh! It flops to full house. My heart. Man. I can't take it. It is kind of funny, though, because Ben's hand is never going to get better, right? <laughs> yeah. It's only going to get worse. But if you hit a four, you still win the bet, in my opinion. I mean, I still get a point. You, hit a, you just got to hit a four. It's not like... You just got to hit your card. Would you agree with that, though, Roddy? Just moving forward? Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. a set is a set. Yeah. It's a funny, you know, it's... We, we're, not, we're not doing hand ranking. We're just trying to see if you hit your card on the board. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, obviously, with one of the fours out, it's going to be a bit harder. I think this is kind of a weird race, almost. Uh, I feel like Ben is really saying, like, I've got a pocket pair, and I think you don't. And, well, it, it worked. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was actually a very interesting play. It's basically, mm -hmm. don't play back at me. And sometimes people, like, they want to play back. They're like, ah, but it'd be so suspicious if I play back. So I just let it go. Very interesting. Isaac Haxton opens things up here with ace 10 offsuit. Ben is sitting at 8 7 of hearts. Fiesta Vigana has got an ugly ace. I actually wouldn't hate just folding a6 here. I know that's a bit weak forehanded. I like it. I like the way he plays, Nananoko. Did he have an ace of club? Just curious. Yeah, yeah, he did. Or the six of clubs. I it was one of them. You. Nah, I don't need to look, Rowdy. It's not okay, fine. But uh, eight seven here. It's a uh, an okay flop. Seen better flops. Seen worse flops. It's one to continue yeah. for the pot. Check raise. I like wow. this Ben C B. He's just taking what is it? Yeah. Out of hand. Yeah. Ben, Ben, what happened in the break? What have you done? <laughs> This is like it's... when the schnitzel really kicks in that you've been devouring in the five minute break. I like it though, because like a lot of guys, they won't raise there because they don't want to blow up the pot. But like, I know, I'm pretty sure Ben would have folded to any resistance really on future streets, but it closes the action. If your opponent just, look, everyone just fires these tiny bets on these flops these days, right? And they just give up when the, they take resistance. So why not deny the equity and not give your opponent the chance to move you off your hand later? Fiesta flops mid pair. Isaac Haxton flops the open ender. It's already 500k in the middle. Would be fun. Yeah. Um, I'm liking Haxton's hand more here, even though he's un unpaired. The same. Just... I mean, he's got two overs and the open ender. Or, like, you know, it's going to be. Uh... They could go, like, right. check. Like, it's hard for 8 3 to be calling down. Still the best hand. It's an okay board, but I mean, I'm like, what's a good board for, for eight three besides two pair plus? Not really anything. Yes, I checks. Do you think there is value in just betting here if you're Isaac Hexen and try to take it down without seeing a river? I think so, because Fiesta stack size means he raises a lot of pretty flop and he C bets a lot of flops. So I do think his opponent's quite weak and he could just take a bet down. The only reason he wouldn't want to bet is if he's afraid he's going to get checked raise off his hand. But yep. the way Fiesta isn't playing, I don't really expect random check value, check raises on turns. So it's pretty good. I think for this bet size, I think you got to call and just hope it goes check, check on a river. I mean, I feel like if Fiesta calls here and then he's hoping for an eight or a three on the river, the five is no good for Isaac Haxton. So if Isaac Haxton wants to win this hand, he's going to have to bet again. Probably a little bit bigger even than he did before. 1.3 million in the middle. Then I know could like for Isaac Hexen, this is a monster pot. For Fiesta Pagana, it'd be nice to win it, but no man overboard if he doesn't. Yeah, it's a tough, it's a tricky, it's a tough spot to bet. He's thinking, yeah, what my pot? I love it. Wall? It's a third pot. But it looks strong, right? This looks very value yeah. bet heavy. It looks like a Jack 10, a Jack 9. King Jack, Ace Jack, even like. I can see that Fiesta knows it looks strong. On the other hand, the price is good. So you don't have to be right too often. But these yeah. chips are so important. Final four, final table, you know. Wow, this is a, it's a very cool hand. I think Isaac Haxton trying to make his hand look strong. Knows his opponent doesn't have a jack. Wow, oh, great call. That's an amazing what? call. Fiesta Pagana makes the call with the pair of eights and wins another monster pot. He now has 7 million chips. And for Isaac Haxon, and I love the way that he played the hand, uh, no, 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 unfortunately it didn't work out. Uh, wow, I I'm kind of shocked because I, I really like everything he did. Maybe bet even slightly bigger on the river, but then 
it it cripples you even more than you want to be crippled if you do get called. I, I thought he played it well, but Fiesta is just so on point. Uh oh, oh but goodbye, look at limitless. This. I think I this is bad Niels for Mr. Malinowski. He's gonna lose all the chips no matter what. I mean not lose them. He's gonna get it all in. Yeah. Ben C V though. And how does he always get these spots? Here we go. He still needs to avoid the aces though. Or trip jacks, of course. That is a safe flop for the Kings. That's a very safe turn for the Kings. Victor Malinowski needs an ace and an ace only, or this is it for him. And this is going to be it for him. We are down to three. And one of the three, you know, tonight's going real fast, by the way, Nanoka. And like out of all the nights, I didn't really want tonight to go very quick because I love our lineup so much. I love our final five. Yeah, it is now down to Ben CB and Fiesta Pagana, who have pretty much all the chips. And then Isaac Haxton is praying for a miracle. Yeah, uh, look, Limitless played solid today. Nothing too crazy, really. Played well. Yeah. Fourth place. It's not too bad. Got unlucky with the Jack forehand. That was kind of in a crucial moment of his run, mm -hmm. where if he does win that pot, uh, it really would have allowed him to make a lot of additional plays. I think he played well. Yeah, I think he played well, for sure. Uh, but Ben CV, man, this guy's sitting on 6 million chips. I don't know how he gets it done, man. Like, he just doesn't play Solid. very many of them. But, man, he's got a first, like a fifth, a top three here. It's like his 19 editions he only played in season one. This is probably the first time he's playing season two, I'm going to guess. I'm guessing. I have no idea. Could he just jam here, by the way, Ben? A hundred, oh, he's going to jam for sure. Right? Okay. This is Ben CV. He doesn't let anything go. Just wondering. Meme hand out. Mate, this could be a heads up between your pick and my pick. It's been a long time since that happened. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's two talented players too, right? And they've they let's just say Isaac Haxton loses to Ben C B. That's a that's a hundred big blinds apiece. We could be here for ages. We could be here, it could be over quickly too. We never know. But, um, yeah, but but we I'm saw Ben it. in the past in heads up, and I remember that he called me out because he had something like 10 7, and then the other guy had ace king, and I was like, uh oh, Ben could be in trouble. And then Ben tweeted at me, he's like, What do you think I'm gonna do with 10 7? Question mark. I'm like, I don't know, Ben. I had money on the line, okay? I was emotionally invested. Jeez Louise, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty funny, anyways. On to this hand, it goes limp raise calls. Fiesta Bagana was pre flop raiser, turns a seven. Ben CB got nothing, but he's got King High. Does it have enough showdown value to check? I think it might. Yeah, I think if I'm Fiesta here, I just check and hope that the seven is good. This and that's exactly what he does, and he will win another one. That's actually a pretty big pot, man. Twelve big blinds. Yeah, Fiesta Pagana. Jam. He, he he gets a little extra edge right now while Isaac Haxon is still alive. So if I I'm not saying if I was Fiesta. I imagine Fiesta Bagana knows that too. So he's gonna try to get as many little chips as he can from Ben C B while Ben C B has to play a little bit tighter than right like the jammy with King Seven. Isaac Haxon obviously doesn't want to call off too loose with his tournament life on the line. Okay. Well played yeah, so the I way it is. I think that's oh I was going I'll be I thought I was going to raise that up, but um uh, still get, gives his opponent too much respect. That's the that's the truth. King nine offsuit versus ace eight offsuit. Ben will go for the limp. I almost feel like this is going to be a little sneak peek into our heads up. Fiesta Pagana just bumps it up immediately with ace eight. Ben with a very quick call. Ben does flop best technically with the pair of nines, but. Fiesta Pagana holds the ace of diamonds. Yeah, Fiesta is a big betting type of player, man. So he yeah. can easily move this king nine off, possibly you know, like on the turn. Or that's the turn card, though. It's hard he to didn't move your opponent see. off the hand. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a, like the worst turn card, pretty much, for Fiesta Pagana. That doesn't hit your hand. So I imagine that's a check to me. And that is a terrible card because you will get your pain off for sure. Easy value bet, in my opinion, for a king nine. Wow, it's such a big, big bet too by Ben. Might Man, that's work, insane. Though. I find it's a pretty insane bet. Yeah, it's big. 
a Fiesta Pagano is trying to read into the situation. Is he getting valued by like a Jack this way? I think the answer could be yes. Wait, Ben is so good. It's actually like not even funny how good Ben is. <laughs> yeah, of course. We all know he's good. Uh, I think Fiesta's like, man, I checked that turn, so I know I don't, he knows I don't have a Jack. Wow, great fold though. Did Ben get a little greedy? That's the question, Roddy. This high level stuff by both of them. If Ben folds, I actually would like to see Fiesta Pagana just jam, make it seem like, because he's going to jam a lot of worse hands too. For sure. Yeah. I think that's what he's going to do. I don't think he's going to go for the limp trap because Isaac Haxton doesn't really have incentive to jam on chip leader Jack no. too often. Sorry, limp. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yes, it does jam. Or Isaac is basically just looking for anything that looks remotely decent. I mean, maybe if Fiesta Pagana doesn't open, he could have jammed, but he's not. Uh, Fiesta is going to open. Queen nine of space just looks lovely. Ben lets go of his nine seven. It's so going to be tough. a battle, mate. It's going to be a battle. It's a good one. Like two great players, two big stacks. I'm assuming Isaac Haxton goes out. And Roddy versus Nano bet. And our side bet is in play for both of us very likely someone's getting some points today if i win i get a little bit less points because my guy had more chips but uh it's pretty cool. close right now. Ooh, well that's a good start for ben at least because it seems like isaac hexton is gonna get a double here that is a lovely flop for king queen no heart no heart it is drawing dead on the turn isaac hexton back in the mix 1.2 million chippies we're all we're all typing up the other two guys. I, Isaac Haxton's gonna scoop this, right? Because remember the, it, the one he won, he had like five big blinds or something at one point, or something small. Oh, he came in as a short stack, I think. And he, he came in as a short stack, but I believe as soon as he got going, he never really looked back. Mm. Ten six, nice board. I mean, not nice board, but playable board. A little yeah. a little C bet would win this one. Check. <laughs> I mean, the, the pocket trees of Ben don't become any prettier. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, 10 6 still going to scoop the spot, I imagine. Like, I don't think he's. Yeah. Wow, no. never mind. Threes is betting. I'm very surprised. You know, I think it's hard for 10 6 to, to actually stick around, right? For sure. It's, I, it's just like no good count. river card other than a jack that's not a heart. He makes wow. the call. The trees are still best. Does Fiesta? Turn his hand into a bluff. Will bend bet again? Nananoka, what the hell is happening? What is this game that these guys are playing? This is a different game right now because Ben yeah. CB makes an unexpected bet. His opponent looks like he's got a king, though. It's so hard to bet. He knows that would get snapped off. Ben is wondering, does his opponent have like a 10-9 enough? What? Wow. That is an amazing bet, and it's it should work. Yeah, yes. uh, unless Fiesta yeah. Pagana is going to pretend that he's got Jack-10, but that would just be the wildest thing ever. All right, he lets it go. Ben CB, oh, I almost want to say draw Spurs blood in this upcoming heads up. Even though Isaac Hexen did obviously get the, the double up. We've got a new chip leader, right? Yes, close. Yes. Close. <laughs> but wow, no. that was, what a crazy hand, Ben. I mean, not Ben, yeah. Roddy. Like, that's just, whew, this is spicy. Proper crazy hand. Ben is just so good in switching gears, right? Because it feels like it's always so solid. Everything is fundamentally making sense. But then he does pick these spots and he just seems to pick the right spot more way, way, way more often than not. I can't say always, but timing. Insane. He's got good timing. Yes, the Pagana. I was also surprised by that call on the turn. And it looked like he was yeah. gonna scoop that once he made that call. Here's the Ben. Value betting the six. It might get looked up. King yeah, High. King High looks pretty good here. King <laughs> yeah king plays yeah. and it doesn't Mate. wow ben is a sicko chip leading for sure now oh man this is getting spicy he already was yes to began with seven five offset it's the first time i feel like in forever that he actually lost a lot of chips because like before yeah he was at 5.5 and he went down to 4.9 now he legitimately went down 1.5 million chips Ben's got trees again, and apparently he really loves trees. <laughs> Tone changes once you lose the chip lead, you know? Like, very different here. Ace, eight, nothing. Monotone board. Not good, yeah. It's not a good board for threes either. 
afford it. Not many are. <laughs> yeah. Especially not if Isaac Hexton falls one of your trees. What are we going to do? Raise or jam? Yeah, that's the interesting thing. Because Isaac Hexton, like, I have been playing tight. But normally, I would just raise. He is going to still raise. Try to get some action. When your opponents have this many more chips than you, like this is a 6x. You kind of want to try to pick up some chips with those hands, right? You're not no need to preserve your tournament life as much. Jack A, champ? I think so. Mm -hmm. he's playing it's definitely a play, um, but he's going to go for the kind of grind it out style. Isaac. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Raises. Absolute nothing. I always feel the logic here is that like there are Almost never any good flops for 9-5, so you may as well race, try to take it down <laughs> pre-flop. Nice flop for Jack A, though. Fiesta Pagana flops a full house, and if Isaac Haxon is stubborn and really wants to win this hand, well, then it's going to be the end of him, because it's impossible to win this hand. Yeah, well, no, it's not impossible. Yes, it is. What do you mean, 10 a club, 7 a club? It rolls off here and there, doesn't it? Get a straight flush. <laughs> 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 All right, Nanaka. No, 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 okay. Yeah. Fine, it's it. not impossible, guys. Okay, what about now? It's impossible, Nanaka. No, 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 you got it. Nailed it. <laughs> I can't believe you pulled the runner runner straight flush <laughs> shock out on me. It's not Are you trying to the... trigger me, Nanaka? No, 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 <laughs> it's the one card one too, right? Like it's a the hard to see one. But I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Very um... proud of you. Double barrel from Isaac Haxton. It's a disaster. That's the problem with these uh, garbage raises from the big line is sometimes you feel committed to post flop. You got like the nut low type hand. Fiesta Bagana calls again, setting the trap. Will Isaac Haxton pull the trigger? 9 5 offsuit. Thinking his opponent's got like an 8 9, an ace 8. Something that can't handle the heat. I think Isaac Haxon knows that he is in a lot of trouble. I'd... Like, it sucks to fall because you're down to less than 10 big blinds, right? It's eight and a bit. But if you can't win a hand, then okay, you can't win a hand. He's looking and... around the table. He's like, well, if I give up here, they've got 7 million each. He goes practically all in. Look, he still has a small blind, Roddy. He, he might fall. Up. Oh, he, he might fall. <laughs> Oh my gosh. The Isaac Haxton <laughs> dusted with 9 5 offsuit. Imagine oh. a world where this is a bounty tournament. You get so triggered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. King Deuce versus 8 6. There you go. Flop, you stop, go. and bottom pair. It's wondering why. They... Oh man. Poor Isaac, though, right? He's turned a small blind into a big blind and a small yeah. blind. It's not bad. It's like triple up. Played so good, and then all of a sudden decides to win a hand with 9-5. Happens yeah. to everyone, man. <laughs> yeah. Really does seem to happen to everyone. Fiesta Bagana is back to his 7.5 million. And that's obviously where he once upon a time was. It's going to be a, a scary heads-up battle for me, because I obviously have the side final table betting too. And I've Do got you know it with you. Do you know what the side bet is? I mean, like, uh, your, your final table bet? betting. Yeah. yeah, I put 100 bucks on Ben, so I got, like, 460 oh. if he wins. It's pretty good, because it's a double bet. But compared to the other ones, you put 50 bucks down mm -hmm. on those guys, right? And th he's back! <laughs> no, Four he's and not a half back. big blinds. No, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's... he's getting there. One more. He's, he's not back a... yet. Not yet, but he's getting there. If Isaac Hexton wins this edition of the High Roller Super Millions, I will get a tattoo of Isaac he's Hexton. Beat... <laughs> he's got to beat Pocket Kings of Jack-10. You think that's happening, Roddy? It's possible. On Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to do it, guys. It is time for Heads Up Poker. Unfortunately, Isaac Hexton gets eliminated in third place. Does walk away with $184,000. I think overall... Pretty decent start to the second season of the High Roller Super Millions for him. But it's time for the heads up between the two guys that came into this final table with the most amount of chips. Fiesta Pagana came as chip leader and pretty much always was a chip leader. 
And then you've got Ben CB, the ever so solid, so good Ben CB. It's going to be a proper heads up, Nino. Yeah, this is a hell of a heads up. Um, Isaac Haxon, though, I think he played great this final table. So third place, well done. He did. A bit unfortunate with the 9-5, but it is what it is, I guess. Here we go. Ooh, what Six, does Ben do five. now? Ben ain't folding ace, nine of hearts, heads up. Makes the call. Flops mid pair, Fiesta Pagana flops bottom pair. Yeah, this is uh, not a good spot for the 6-5, is it? You make a pair, your opponent makes a pair. It's an it's okay. That's a terrible card for Fiesta, I mean. Great for Ben CB. This type of board where you can get some value somewhere. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Fiesta goes for a bet, and he does. Funny, uh, funny line, I guess. Free betting, check flop, bet turn. I think with the six is also vulnerable to a counterfeit, so just try to take it down. I don't. I think he knows his hand is almost never good, but it's also a board where it's hard to bluff. So he checks. I think Ben will gladly check back, especially with the ten rolling off. First one. Oh. One hand lead. in. First blood. Neil Ship leader. Ben CB. He's back to 7.5 million. And he's got pocket sixes. I'm getting bad vibes. And Don't say that. No, no, no. You're not allowed to curse <laughs> anything tonight, okay? This is also not how it works because you cannot curse my guy in hopes of your guy. So don't even start. <laughs> no, I'm just saying because uh, I want to point out that, you know, Ben CB, he doesn't play much, but my God, does he just crush, right? Like he just. Doesn't play much, always gets the biggest scores out there. I don't know how he does it, but um, both both have played well up to this uh, heads up so far. Two bets in, the jack four has gotten there. Beat the sixes somehow. How do we know how? He did it. Actually kind of annoying for Ben. I was looking at Spain just missed a big chance. Italy is winning Nanonoko. Let That's because Mateos went down. Once no. Mateos went down, I would have picked the other side. <laughs> oh, wow. That was a sitter, too. Unbelievable. Well, it doesn't get much more even than this when it comes to heads up. Both literally playing 6.9 million chippies. Anyone's game. I do think it's going to be a proper grind. We are going to head into only our second break. Like, Nano, we don't often get to heads up before the second break. This is quite crazy. And I don't even feel like we had too many setups or anything, right? It's just that Fiesta Pagana had all the chips, so all the other guys were kind of short-stacked. And here we yeah. are with Ben and Fiesta ending up with together all the chips. Yeah, for sure. It's, and it's funny, Ben CB was actually the guy who sniped most of the people. I feel like he just picked up a million chips when they went all in every single time, and he had, you know, the right timing. Fiesta Bagana, value betting. Will he get looked up by the 9 5? 3.5 big blinds. Calls. Ben makes the call, receives the bad news that this 9 is no good. The other one was, this one isn't. So we're kind of back to Fiesta having a little lead over Ben. But um, I really do think it's anyone's game. I think they're equally matched. I wouldn't say one's better than the other guy in heads up. Both guys are clearly MTT players that play really well. This is where I go full Nananoko and I'm like, ooh, I'm getting bad vibes. So my guy just my guy lost a couple of chippies. I'm getting real bad vibes over here. <laughs> Fiesta Pagano flops the bottom pair and a flush draw. Ben is betting into him. It's a disaster. True. It's hard for Ben CB to keep betting this board right now. He does bet again. But Fiesta Pagana's got the club draw. I think it's just enough to continue. Randomly has the best hand. Yeah. Hits a flush. But I don't think Ben CB will bleed anymore. I don't know. When your opponent check calls his turn, they look like they got a jack a lot, don't they? But maybe he will. Fire one more. Hoping his opponent has like an ace five, an ace seven. They would fold for sure. He bets oh. pot. That's the worst. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think Fiesta is going to race, I think, because he's oh, yeah. hoping that Ben has a jack and that he wants to pay off. I think I'm yeah. in the race to like 2.2 million or something. Yeah, Fiesta just trying to figure out the right price. But uh, Ben CB's logic really is I'm trying to get uh, the ace X's to fold. That would check call, check call for sure. Um, 
he goes pot, which is quite interesting because I don't think he's getting a jack to fold anyways. So I would have loved him to see him size a little bit down to like say 700k, 600k mm -hmm. if he was going to bluff at it. Wow. Fiesta real worried, just calls, even though he's got the third nuts. Yeah. Only the king high uh, flush and the jack high flush would have beat him. Does mean that he takes a big lead. It's also nice to win a big hand as the final hand right before it breaks. And now Ben has five minutes to beat himself up over that one. And Fiesta can just enjoy the 9.5 million chips he's currently sitting on. It's time for our second break of the evening. And we'll be back in four minutes to continue the heads up battle between Fiesta Pagana and Ben CB. Hello, everybody. Daniel Grano here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations. You know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's going to fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flopped the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see, in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry. You don't even have to lift a finger. First, Simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop up window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back to our three, week three of season two, High Roller Super Millions, the weekly 10K that takes place over at GG Poker. Where we are following the heads up between Fiesta Pagana and Ben CB. Even though Ben just lost a big one, I feel like if anyone can just still spin it up, it has to be Ben. He's always so solid. And I feel like a little chip deficit shouldn't hurt Ben too much. Big hand immediately. A7 against A6, 800K in the middle. Let's see what Fiesta decides to do. I feel like every time we, you got someone with a lot of chips and his heads up right away, they somehow like lose a bunch of them within the first 10 minutes. And you always like <laughs> invested with some final table betting, but it's not over. Two to one chip lead. And wow. The yes, place. Has, oh, oh my this, God. I was like the seven plays. It does not, not anymore. Somehow finds a six on the river. By the way, Fiesta Pacana does not have a lot of shot clock left. I just noticed that only 59 yeah. seconds. He's, he's got one minute to take down this tournament. Otherwise, it's things over. change. <laughs> wow. Is the six going to think go for a value bet? He is. Don't think he'll get cold, but still impressive. Yeah. I mean, 36 big blinds is fine. 29 i feel like that's where things start looking a bit dire when your opponent is sitting at like 90 or 100 even a7 is not folded yet does he think he's getting floated by like a king jack or something like a king 10 king 9 you know something funny possible man still has plenty of time to go over this but if you're wrong here you do get set back pretty far Oh, Calls. he makes the call. And we'll receive the bad news that he got rivered by the six of his opponent. Like Fiesta Pagana just has, he has got 110 big blinds. What the hell? Like he's been at 100 <laughs> big blinds this entire final table. It's ridiculous. It's really hard to have 100 big blinds at heads up just based on time progression. But right now he's out solid Ben CB so far in his heads up, in my opinion. I mean, he did just spike a six on the river, mate, to be fair. True, but he did get value, which is an impressive value bet there on that board. Um, and to get called by the, the A7 is, I don't know, it's uh, ambitious a little bit. But, uh, you know, they've got their reads. I'm sure they play with each other a lot. Going to get it wrong sometimes. Ever since you said it, you've got bad vibes, your opponent went up by five million chips. I love it, mate. <laughs> I really like that you squeeze that comment in there. It's just great. You think it works every single... I mean, it does work at a very high frequency. <laughs> Let's see. Wow. Ben makes the bet. King high, but he's got no time. King high is good right now. Near pot size bet. If he can make... Oh, this would be a sick call. Let's mm -hmm. check down to the river. What's min raised? I actually... Three. I think he's going to call. The man's got 106 big blinds. Well, he's and been King playing Ten is... very, very well. Almost, oh, he does fold, okay. but yeah. It's, this is a good battle. It really is. It doesn't feel like a very fair battle to me. It feels like one guy's got an Apache attack helicopter and the other guy's got a baseball bat, but we'll, we'll see how the battle goes. Well, as played right now, Ben CB limp stays for suited. Definitely will at least call, does make the call. Opponent really can't win this pot. We'll lose some extra chips, I'm sure, since he raised it. Oh, he can learn a no-co. Running jacks or running eights. <laughs> I'm surprised you say that rather than like the, the Queen 10 run out, you know, like more obvious. But uh, let's see. Wow, he's still checking, though. Hasn't put in a single chip yet. Is there a world where Fiesta Pagana loses no chips on this hand? He's quite surprising, actually. Because he was a pre-flop raiser, puts in four bigs. This is completely okay with letting it go. Ben are probably a little bit triggered. Why are you not betting? I feel like Ben's going to go real small, like 280 or 300. Oh, he's going to no. go real wow. big instead. Hot. Wow. That's quite interesting. Hmm. Interesting. 35 seconds. Like, if we can get to heads up. And Fiesta Pagana has no time anymore. And Ben has like five plus million chips. And I still think Ben can do it. Yeah, I still think he can do it. But, you know, like, it's a proper battle. Like, these are two, two extremely strong players. Fiesta Pagana. 
I think he will run into his time bank though at some point in his heads up. Really lovely turn. Already had a second pair. Makes an open ended to go with it. I'll take this one down. Six five of hearts against queen six offsuit. It looks like around this 35 big blind mark, peep, they're going for that limping strategy. Increase that stack to pot ratio. Which actually makes it worse for the guy with no time bank, because these pots are a little bit more complex, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. I was a bit surprised to see Ben make some of these spots so big early on, because that was not his style at all. The last time we saw him at the final play, when he managed to the thing, pick Roddy. Up. Once you get the heads up, things change. Remember Ferrari Man? That guy didn't play a single hand, but in heads up, he's like, well, there's only one guy left. I got to make my moves, make my plays. And same thing for Ben. He's like, well, you've got one opponent left. It's just battle. Heads up is when you get shown. Look at Landon, Perkins, you know, like Doug and, and Daniel. You know what's really funny, right? Like I thought back of this while we were talking about that heads up earlier between Landon and Bill. Mm -hmm. And you said like, yeah, it's heads up, you know, there's like some crazy days can happen. Let's not forget that Doc Paul, close before the end, was actually kind of locking it up because he was really afraid that the 400k lead or something he still had was going to slip away. You remember when he did the limping yeah. gate and mm -hmm. there was all this drama? And then just the final two shows, he ran it up to the moon when he felt like there's no way he could lose anymore. And then it ended up with that 1.1 million profit, which obviously sounded real big. But like when there were like 19, 20,000 hands left, it really wasn't that one-sided, so it's kind of interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, like, a, I mean, we got a great match here. I think I, I, there's a lot to talk about with that one. It should be fun. We can probably talk about it next week. They're still going to be memeing about it, so you know, like, uh, but it is quite interesting for sure. Um, I just, I don't think they need to throw in the towel yet. That's my bottom opinion about it. Rather than don't make the challenge in the first place. That's that's what I'm thinking. <gasps> Oh, Spain just scored. Sick. <laughs> well, Mateos is, uh, is is watching that game, I'm sure. Yep. Doesn't feel too bad anymore Ooh. about busting. <laughs> Look at that. That's a, that's a smooth call there. Calls a queen eight high on the flop. No back doors. And on that run out, he's going to have to bluff. Can Ben CB look him up with just a nine on a four flush? That's so hard. That is he so did. hard. He didn't uh, fold yet. No, he's out. <laughs> I like how you say he didn't fold yet one second into the decision. I'm like, well, give him another second, then and okay, he may make the fold. <laughs> yeah. No, the more I thought about it, no, nah, there's no way. Intense suited. Funny how when the heads up, the back doors become the new best hands. And suited pot. This is a. I know you say we have a battle on our hands, but when one guy is sitting at 110 big blinds and the other one's got 25. I know it's possible, but I, I feel like, ooh. The pocket force. No go. You'd be okay with this, though, right? Like, okay, I, I take a lead on one. Oh, oh! you did a stop. <laughs> Let's go. Happy <laughs> screenshotting, guys. I, I already saw a lot of people screenshotting earlier. They're like, does this count? No, that one didn't count. This wow. one, though, it did count. Brutal. Yes, makes a set of fours. Roddy gets on the board. Take that, oh, Nenonoko. If Fiesta <laughs> just preflop jammed, he wouldn't have got to see. Oh, my God. He tried. He did your thing. Let them see a flop. You're going to hit a set. Try to hang your opponent. Aye, aye, aye. So you do get me a one board on one point on that board. So now it's fair. I, I win the other one. You win that one. We're even. <laughs> I mean, I would still like to see Ben win it because of my final table betting. <laughs> no, and then I get the double kill on you. That's extra special. That's pretty. Wow. Well done, Roddy. Yeah. Pocket fours. They do make a set after <laughs> all. They always make a set. And then you asked me earlier, are we going to see it today? And I said, yes. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you did. Uh, I did say that, didn't I? You were right. Oh, I'm pissed you know, it's off. actually funny how uh, excited. Or... Huh? Sometimes I'm really surprised with like how excited people get over certain little like side things or like a chance to win tickets. But we already had so many. Like I took a look at my Twitter. I was like, whoa, what's happening? And everyone's taking <laughs> screenshots of 
pocket force and a flop being 666 is like does this count no guys that's not a set okay <laughs> of course it doesn't count but that one counts yeah that's yeah that's pretty funny oh i can't believe you hit a set then this i can't believe it took three weeks and then like pocket force always makes set salty all right so blinds are up ben's on 20 big blinds yes he's at a big deficit right now but one double, he's got 40 big blinds, and we know 40 big blinds is a lot to work with. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Jack-10 suited, King-8 suited, raise. We know we're going to at least see a fluff here. But if he has to Pagana do something very wild. Nice. Like a limp jam? Call. Maybe. Flop stop pair, though, and also has backdoor diamonds. Ben keeps betting. Ben obviously does have a gutter ball. He's looking for a queen. What about a queen of diamonds, Nenonoko? Oh! There's the queen of spades, though. Drilled it. Okay, Roddy. You ben. complain enough, you get your reward. And I think gonna, as played, this is all in at some point. You wow. got to moan it in every now and then. And then okay, you know how it is as a poker player. You just got to moan long enough until you hit them. Wow, that's so brutal. And Fiesta Vagana shot clock running down, too. There's just no... The only way Pagan doesn't lose more of, like... I guess there's not a lot of cards he doesn't lose more, like a queen, jack, 10. Maybe there's some checking happening. But right now, that's it's not good for P.S. to Vagana. No. I got to say, that's an checks. annoying a river for Ben, but you're obviously never folding a straight heads up anyway, right? Ben's not folding. I guess the question yeah. is, does P.S. to Vagana sometimes check? Thinking, oh, he does check. Wow, saved. Because he, he could easily lost that 1.3 million. The nine, mm -hmm. I can see him being scared. Flush got there, trip nines. Should All right, so yeah, Ben chips back up to 3.5 million, but indeed probably sucks. Wow. Would have liked to see him be a little more. Gems the jam. deuces, a limp gem the deuces. All right. Feisty. Right. Now he's just about 40, a little bit under. Proper battle now, Roddy. You moan enough, you get your reward. Oh, come it's on. It's not a proper battle yet, mate. If this match lasts two more levels, I'm going to complain again. And we'll be back. Yeah, you should. The deuce is still good of Ben. And the board pairing, if you thought your deuce was good, I don't think it's still good. He leads lead. on the board pairing. What do you make of that? Yeah, it's a, it's a very common play these days. Um, take Retake control to action. It's hard for your opponent to make a move too, especially if you have to do the, the trips as well. See, I call it trips and not set. Trip sixes. It's hard for Fiesta Pagana to win this one. He's got 10 seconds left in the time bank. Yeah. For the people who are unfamiliar with what happens if he's out of time, basically then you have five seconds and then the emergency shot clock starts running and then you have five seconds. Otherwise, your hand will be automatically folded. He makes a call just jack seven high. Picks up some cards, but against a pot size bet, can't do anything. Nope. Surprise Ben went so big there. I think really hoping his opponent hit a 10. Yeah, I, I don't fault it. I don't think a 10 would ever fold anyway, so he goes for the max. 40 big blind stacks, two sevens. Is this a hand or call? Is it three bet? I'm not so sure. I think I'll just call, to be honest. Okay, Ben goes for a big race and takes it down. Because Ben is a god. Well, he's closing in on that 5 million. There are only a couple of seconds Jeez. left. All right, make a play then with your queen eight of spades, Fiesta Pagana. That's a beautiful... Oh, my goodness. It's no, no, God. Do you think that Ben can flop. lose his hand? <laughs> no. Oh, wow. my God. <laughs> Watkins. That's ridiculous. Ben CB is thinking, look, I don't need a hit. One big blind, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, you, you got to get some chips in, so let's go for the one big blind. Might get called by Queen High. Does. Wow, that's a terrible that, board for Fiesta Pagana. I would he call, could... actually. I would always call it. Like, if Fiesta Pagana checks and Ben bets, I would just call. Like, even if it's a pot size bet. Yeah, because the way it's playing, the... it does look like they're playing the board. Yeah, of course. This is also like, uh, you know, there's two, two... kings. So if it's you have a pocket pair, Rod, I still two think. Pot. It's tough. It's yeah. not easy. But he's got no time. That's the problem. He, he calls. calls. Oh, quads, quad kings for <laughs> Ben. What a horrible river card. Fiesta would not lose any chips. 
I don't know, maybe an ace or another deuce. That's so sick. Wow, he pretty much like lost even if the someone. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> We're even. Okay, Roddy. I told you with twenty big ones, you can't count a guy out. Of course, it's heads up. We could be here for ages. Out. I just said he had a baseball bat. This is an, an attack helicopter. Well, this attack helicopter has got no fuel because he just lost all of the chips. It's going down. Great battle. Mm -hmm. Ace three versus Jack four. Got shot for Fiesta. Ben does make bottom pair. Bottom pair is good. Bottom pair will definitely continue. Wow, I Probably can't believe that river, it. mate. That's such a sick river. The deuce when you have quad kings. Yeah, no, like that's actually the perfect card because I don't yeah. think he can get 2x pot on another different card. He can only get maybe pot and max. Mm -hmm. uh, on the real. That's actually on the real. I, I do feel a bit for Fiesta Beganic. And I mean, I like the call as well because I'd be like, mate, I'm, I'm the chip. I'm not folding a 700k chip. Like, what do you think you're going to do? You pretend like you've got a king here, mate. Man is like, no, I've got two. <laughs> <laughs> It's worse that PS2 gonna had no time bank too. So like yeah. it's just like, oh man, I know I have to call here. He couldn't like try to break it down. Maybe he still calls, but time bank is it's not a good thing on it. It's not on his side. This may just be the best night ever, mate. We see a set of fours. Ben might still take it. <laughs> yeah, you you're on the board on both of our little side bets. You win your final table bettings. The guy you put a hundred bucks down on, like it's just lining up perfectly for Roddy. Spain's winning some goals. I assume you bet on Spain, did you? Yeah, like I don't think I'm winning in the football game, but that's okay. It's, at least it's fun. I mean, I had over 2.5, which I already thought was a bad bet anyway, because Spain, Italy is not a game that has a lot of goals. But whatever. Ah, so he'd have to score X amount of points. Is that right? Yeah. Gotcha. But it's fun to see, uh, you know, a proper semi final. Maybe when the show's over, I can enjoy some overtime. I mean, this could, you might not get to see any of that match. It could, it could be a while. Got stacks. You got the chip lead, Ben CB. He's got. I'm sure he's probably streaming it too, and then like all his chats just going crazy. You gotta remember, the most amount of people who bet on final table betting was on Ben CB. Fiesta mm -hmm. Magana had a lot of money on him too, but those were average bet size, uh, a lot larger, less people. Jack eight suited. Fiesta Pagana getting wow. low. A little crazy now. He calls. Jack 8's more playable on this board right now, though. No, you just got to see about. Like, I think even this 500 or 600k looks pretty powerful. Wow, he goes so one. big. 1.1. <laughs> ben shows that he had a jack. That's what Fiesta wants to see. That means, like, oh, I got the better hand to fold. And four off. One second. So practically, he's got like how much time does he actually have then? About ten. He, I think it's ten a... seconds. I think it's five seconds before the emergency shot clock starts running. Got it. Like... Lovely flop for Ben. Don't think Fiesta is going to lose too many chips here. Oh, he Makes does call. call, picks up a gutter ball on the turn, but this is bad news for him. Oh, for sure. Diamond doesn't help. That is a bad card for Fiesta Begana because if you check call king high on this board, you're going to want to turn into a bluff and six of diamonds. Well, pretty much any diamonds never folding, even for this size. Mm -hmm. That's 600k. Ben makes a very quick call. We'll see if the Niels at his end was good, is good. Basically. Was good all along. Ace 10 versus Queen 8. Maybe this is the one where Fiesta Pagana can pick up some chippies. Not the greatest flop for Ace 10, though. Little bit here. Benjamin CB. Makes the call of just Queen 8 high. It's got the little. Little funny cards. And that's a that's a good card for Ben and if he's gonna bluff, because like he, he can represent a pair pretty easy i think i don't, I don't mm -hmm. think fiesta will, can handle any heat to be honest like 500 600k probably has to go a bit bigger now 1.3 wow. million okay Looks strong isn't strong he's 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 got some game for sure 
I could have known that Ben CB would have some game. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and these like tricky, these like bet sizes that are kind of like everywhere, they, uh, it's quite tough for a guy of no shot clock because he's not going to know. He needs to think about those spots a bit more, you know? Yes, so taking a note out of Ben's playbook there with a little over bet. King high flush throw and a jack. They play pretty fast, actually. Yeah, they play real Where fast. Yeah. And that obviously means that the blinds go up quick, too. Little Wouldn't mind a call from Fiesta. Calls the standard, but looks like he wants to three bet it. Went into the emergency shot clock. <laughs> So is this number one and two in chips to start? I think so, right? Yeah, yeah. Fiesta was a yeah. chip leader. He came in with 3.5 million. Ben came in second place with 2.7. And they were pretty clear of the rest, to be fair, because the yeah. next one was limitless with 1.8. All right, well, Fiesta's got the queen eye flush draw. Nothing. Both players are nothing. Ben CB want to steal. It's just six high. Good work. It is two thirds pot. Yes, they can't do anything, can he? He's got queen high with seven kicker. Wow. Four seconds. He calls. Makes the call. Sick. That is sick. Look at that board yeah. too. Wow. Wow. I bet That's... Ben looks at us like, all right then. <laughs> Noted. Don't bluff the Norwegian dude. Wow. King 10 versus Queen 10 here. Yeah, that's a great flop for your Fiesta Pagana. That this is a no good heads up. Wow. You don't see that every day. Check call. Queen high doesn't have anything. Thinking about leading, isn't he? That would not work. No, he checks. Yes, he's got king high flush draw. He's got showdown value. It hasn't hit anything yet, though. Thinking about betting. Is going to bet near pot. Takes it down. Eight nine suited. Oh, this is a three bet call type hand. So this pot's going to define this heads up right now. I think. Let's see what kind mm -hmm. of flop we're going to drop. It's a big race, but Ben makes the call. The flop is ace four four. Fantastic for Fiesta. Terrible for Ben. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you can't you can't get any action on this board, but it's better than it running out low. It's insane that he's back to do 9.1 million, even though he's playing this without any shot clock time bank whatsoever. Still making queen high calls with that shot clock, too. That's pretty crazy, because that's the type of hand where you need some time to think about. Yeah. We're back into limping around the 35 big blinds. Fiesta says no. Should be slightly better for Ben. I'm going to guess, just guess the, the Twitch and YouTube streets are super hype right now for this match. Like, this, this, everyone's invested. Because we even have lead changes, you don't see that very often. Yeah. Like first there is like a dumb, at first it's even, then Fiesta feels like he's running away with it. Then there was a total lead change. And now Fiesta does have a proper lead again, but we cannot count Ben out. Five million chips and he's still one with quite some time left in the bank. Queens against 10-5 here. A 10 on the turn would be disastrous for Fiesta. You try to he's bait him see with the limp. Hot garbage, Jack four offsuit. What's the play? It's a raise. Six eight suited though. Pretty good. Oh, -ho. almost your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have never gone there. I say a lot of dumb stuff, but I've never gone there. No, no, cut. <laughs> and the, the funny thing is, it's not even close to your birthday, is it? If that'd be June eighth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Ten three against Ace A. Ten three does somehow flop best. Ben yeah. bets here. Definitely gonna get called. Ben does not bet. Yes, I might throw out a little bet here. 
Yeah, maybe even definitely worth size the size yeah, Something ends out though. Ends like I'm not calling down Vase High no more. 10 9. 7 5. Now that is close to your birthday. That is a true statement. <laughs> also close to my birthday. This is an interesting flop, Nana Noko. Can we stop talking about birthdays? It's like top two <laughs> pair for Fiesta. Well, Ben has a. Uh, yeah. Well, he has a gut shot straight draw now, but he also has a seven high flush draw. Yeah, he's got a bunch of weak draws. Mm -hmm. I don't think he can really continue, can he? Like, mm. he might hit his hand, but it might be dead, you know? Like, that's. Yeah. It's a bad straight draw. I don't know. Is he thinking about something? He makes a he check is. raise. Wow. It's the hand's not over. A lot of bad river cards. Fiesta. I think we just I call here, though. I think we yeah. just call for your Fiesta and then let's no see time. what the river brings. Wow, that is a bad card. That is actually card. a bad card for Fiesta, too, because now he loses uh -huh. against every jack, every six. Oh, man. Can Very Ben bad. pull the trigger? I mean, this spot is so big. He kind of needs to send it, I think. Wow. All in. I think he, I think he should bet. I think he because... gems. Is he, his opponent could easily have like a naked ace of club type hand, like ace 10, you know, ace nine. Like, there's so many hands that Fiesta would fold. There's a lot of hands that would call too. But Ben's got a bet. I mean, yeah. It's just what it is. You Your can't give up it. on this one. 3.7 million. I think that's too much to just give up on. Yeah. I don't know if Fiesta can. Well, oh, he gives he up. Fiesta. Failed out on this hand, in my opinion. I think he would have to fold the river shove, right? Just yeah, have to. Of course. Like, you don't beat anything. And Ben's going to be real sad to see that that's the hand he went up against. Because that is a hand that could not have called a lot of things. Jesus. Oh, this is a good flop for him, though. Because, you know, his opponent did pair five. Mm -hmm. It is something that can give action limp pot. And make a little call. Turns a jack. Ben's been overbetting these turns. It hasn't been getting paid off. Do you think he still continues that way? He is overbet. Eight might, five might call though. Yeah, it does be a lot of draws. Ten nine. A lot of king, king ten, king nine, that kind of stuff. That's right. Well, that would beat him too now. <laughs> yeah, at this point, like I don't expect him to get a third barrel in with the eight five. Like he he loses to his hands he was trying to pick off. Exactly. The only thing that I guess you could still hope for is your opponent had like a six, seven of hearts kind of hand, right? But yeah, but Fiesta. Then you're re really reaching. What? Wow. Oh, I mean, Ben has man. to call. Ben has to call. Because it's like 1.6 million. It's not yeah. nice. Like you're worried here, but you have to call. Yeah, you got 11. Oh man, but it's tough. It's tough, no, but it's tough. But you have to you're call. Sh you're short. You're sitting on eleven, twelve big blinds. You know your opponent's capable of some plays. I'm sure they play each other a lot. Aces. Hey, you have to call. You cannot fold aces here. The thing is, Fiesta Pagana, right? Like he's got to be worried about ace king and stuff like that. So his jam's a little bit more bluffy, I think. You know, like what is Fiesta Pagana like? Like Fiesta Pagana is basically setting flop two pair or something. Didn't mm -hmm. raise pre flop. Oh man. I mean, it really sucks for Ben because, like, if you if this happens, you're gonna feel that you are beat, and you can see you can think of a million hands that beat you here. Yes, I think you have to close your eyes and and click call. Wow, he folds, he folds oh pocket God. aces and loses to the eight five offsuit. Which is oh. your birthday, Roddy? Which is? Oh my God! I've not seen. Wow. I mean, there are obviously a million hands that beat aces there, but oh, now we are down to eleven big blinds. Ben is not gonna be happy when he sees that one back. Insane play by Fiesta Pagano. I have no idea where that came from, but. The guy the with no clock. time bank is yeah. actually using it to his advantage. Maybe he's like, look, no one's sick enough to make a play within 10 seconds like that with these stack sizes. My God. Wow. Sick. And Ben's bet on the river was quite big as well, right? Where it feels like he could almost never fold. It's insane. It was like more than 30% of his remaining stack. 
Wow. You know, he overbet the turn and then he just bet half pot on a river. Only had 10 big blinds, 11 big blinds remaining. He look, he's like, I'm going to take the 1.3 versus the 13 million. Let's go. 10 to 1. That's insane. It's safe to say that things are looking real bad here for Ben CB. I'd like to see him start jamming the Queen Nines and stuff. I mean, it's obviously a really crappy call to make there with Aces because, yeah, the, there's so many hands that beat you there. Ted's up, though. You know, it's like, oh, man. <laughs> it's an amazing hand. I'm sure it, we're going to be talking about that if it ends anytime soon. But wow. That is definitely, the I would say, as of right now, the defining moment of this heads up. Whew. Ten big blinds. Ben CBs has studied the 10 big blind game. Remember, he was a sit and go player at one point in his life. Heads up, sit and goes, spin and goes, regular sit and goes. He knows how to get this done. But in those games, you don't have 10 to 1 chip lead. <laughs> now he's using the running hot. A little bit too late. Oh, wow. I'm like, I was watching the football game and it's. Like suddenly I'm seeing the news. I'm like, what the hell? Apparently, a very famous uh, crime journalist in the Netherlands just got shot. That's actually oh. this man is very famous. It's pretty shocking. Brutal. Yeah. All right, here it is. Happening. Ben. All uh, in ben. call. I'll keep calling you Ben, but here we go. Yeah, it's all in call for sure. Two hands, I can go to war. Ace nine offsuit against King Jack of Spades. Can Ben start another comeback? That's Bad. not a great flop. That's not a well with a club okay. to chop. King okay. Jack or a club is what we need. A King Jack, nope, it's over. That's it. It's over. It is all over. It's Fiesta Pagana who wins week three of the High Rollers Super Millions here after just a couple of absolutely insane plays in the heads up and walks away with $302,000. Nelanoko, you picked the winner. I mean, you went back to your old tricks, you duck, just picking guys that come in with overwhelming chip leads. Nobody is impressed by it, but well done. Congratulations. But let's talk about Fiesta Picana. That man played excellent and played like a sicko too. He came in as a chip lead, really did not give it up um, at all throughout the whole final table. Played amazing, right? Like, I want to say throughout this final table, like, he kind of just grinded his way to the top too you know it wasn't like oh he got dealt aces versus kings and stacked some guy no he had some tough spots throughout um grinded really well amazing player i think you were pretty impressive his play too um and you know and heads up i, I thought i think he out solid ben cb a little bit more i it, it was a fair match ben cb was getting out of line in a lot of spots made this timing was actually a little off felt like you know like he when, when he went for the bluff uh, it's going to have a flush, you know, on funny boards. And then when he didn't pull the final trigger, the 7 5 hand, right, against the 10 9, he would have got his hand, his opponent to fold most likely. Then we had the two aces. He bet, bet, bet. He limp trapped and actually folded the best hand. Uh, it's just, his timing was, was all for Ben CB up to the heads up. But before that, Ben CB played perfectly. Um, I think he played the heads up all right, too. Just that he got, he got out. Not, I don't want to say outplayed. But a little bit today, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, the, the six on the river, the A6 against A7, that was also maybe a little bit of a turning point in momentum, mm -hmm. right? That one was a, re a relatively big pot. The hand with the aces is just absolutely well. I do think that Fiesta Pagana played very well throughout the entire night. And it, it was definitely going nice, right? It's nice when it kind of feels that your entire final day will journey is a never ending upswing. Like there were a couple of minor setbacks. But once he had the biggest setbacks, you're like, all right, now the wheels come off. No, not at all. He just re retook the, the lead, played solid. I cannot believe the hand with 8 5. I cannot believe it worked. I don't know what to say now. No, I'm speechless. I thought I was going to get the one combo. I thought I was going to get the two for one. Pocket Force made a set. Ben was going to win it again after we put some money on him, too, and I picked him. But well done. This was honestly just an awesome lineup. We went in with high expectations at the beginning of the day. And I think it delivered. It, it went almost quicker than I wanted it to go, and then I expected it to go. Yeah, it definitely delivered, though. I mean, Ben CB, he's just a phenomenal player. The dude has played like 20 editions of the Super Millions Lifetime. We've had, what, 55 about? He's got a first. He's got a second place here. He's got a fifth place. 
Um, he streams his whole cards up, okay, before the final table. So he's giving away information, and he's still crushing it. Um, definitely a great role model. He's very inspirational. He's got his, you know, his Razor Edge uh, course, and he's got they got Instagram. They post some hands, learn from him. Really amazing player. Um, he didn't get the King Six suited today though, so he couldn't get it done, Roddy. But uh, in the end, it was Fiesta Pagana. My pick to win. Okay, he played great. He didn't do well in season one, Fiesta Pagana, but season mm -hmm. two, he's gonna be back, and he's gonna be he's he's gonna be the first one to win two titles. I'm calling it now, Roddy. Uh, to be fair, all of our champs, I mean, I know it's lame when we are sitting here, we're like, oh, the champions are all great. Because then people are like, yeah, that's what they're supposed to say. But I genuinely mean it, Nenonoka. Like last season, we had plenty of weeks with someone won who's like, I think that's going to be the only one you're going to win for a long time, mate. And that's okay. You know, we all get a little bit lucky in poker. But I've, I've been super impressed by the level of play that we've seen in the first three weeks. Last week, our Hungarian, Jelep, I, we forgot the, how to pronounce it, but he was awesome. Week one, Ottoman, our previous or current Grandmaster League chess player, he was damn good and into a couple of very difficult spots. Still often found the, the correct way out. And today, Fiesta Pagana. He made some moves towards the end that I didn't see coming. I was like, all right, it's easy to three bet with queens and it's easy to be a chip leader and put some pressure on the guys. But while things got evened up again with Ben, he still managed to stay calm and composed and he found spots that I generally didn't even know existed. And he should have lost more chips even with the king eight against the jack 10. Maybe the river nine pairing the board saved him a bit there, but pretty insane yeah. performance. Yeah, like I said, I, I do feel Ben CB's timing in the heads up was a little bit off. Um, but that ace is 8-5, man. Uh, that's that's seriously the hand of the night for sure. I'm sure Ben CB will be reviewing that hand. He's probably going to be tweeting about it or something. Um, give him a follow. He's on there, out there on Twitter. Like, that is definitely the hand to talk about. And I know the thing is, you know the Twitch chat right now. They're typing crazy things to Ben CB right now. Ben CB's all calm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me. I need to review this spot. You know, like... It, it's a great it was a great table i really loved it this week i think i liked it the best of the three so far to be honest i thought the other two weeks were pretty damn good too mostly just yeah. because we were so impressed by the chip leader but this one had the star power this one had the names that we get very excited over and then the best thing i guess about it is that all five of them kind of survived at least fiesta was a bit more known but he was a chip leader than the other four those are the four we wanted to see i think it was an awesome episode and if this doesn't leave you hungry for more high roller super millions and I don't know what will. Obviously, we are live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central European Summer Time. That is 5 p.m. UTC. Always over at ggpoker.tv or just head over to YouTube, type in GG Poker and give the channel a like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. So I'll try some uh, short deck series. I mean, there are short deck series currently going on. I don't know. What do you say? Should I give it a shot? Take a shot at one of the $100 or $200 ones out there, Roddy. I think... Uh... Why not? Just don't rebuy unlimited. Just be like, okay, I've had enough. Go back to pillow. But at least one, one shot somewhere, Roddy. And just let, send me a hand history. Let me know how you did. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I, you want to see my hand history in short deck. <laughs> to be fair, mate, my short deck experience is literally Ace King versus Jack Dan suited. All in, all in, all in. That's 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 literally my short deck. People love Jack Dan and Queen Ten because I guess the equities run a lot closer mm -hmm. than they do in regular No Limit Hold'em. I think it's been a fun episode, mate. Anything else you want to share with the people at home? Nothing. Uh, I guess I just want to say I hope production next episode puts a little graphic. Nanonoko has points on the leaderboard, on the side bet, or something. Just going to remind you until you get on the board yourself. I did pick the chip leader, but I did win it. And I did pick pocket fours, and they did make a set, so that makes us even. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you guys are playing some poker later tonight, we obviously wish you all the best. And we hope to see you here again next week where we'll have nine fresh faces make it to the final table. Can't promise it's going to be as good and fun as this one, but we're going to do our best. Have a good evening and see you next time. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my! God. Michael Otamo is the best.